Greetings, fellow jobbers, and welcome to another amazing episode of the Jobber Tears podcast. I'm back. It is so good to be back. I am Janelle from HR with Sir Wilkins and Mr. Black here. And last week, you guys had to excuse my tardiness of not being here, my accentness of not being here, but I was literally on my way back from New Orleans. It was super, super exciting. I slightly um, missed you last week, but don't get hyped. What? I slightly missed you last week, but don't get hyped. <laughs> okay, that's believable. <laughs> but all right, how was last week though? How was it? Thank you guys to Ivy and my homeboy, Alex. We had the Platinos and um, Chicken Connection. I know. Oh, Platinos and Grits. No, it's Platinos and Collard Greens. No, I don't eat grits. It's Platinos and grits. I don't eat grits. But that's what I said in the episode. No, but I don't eat grits though. Wait, so what do you eat? Do you eat porridge? I don't, I don't, I don't eat grits either. I think what? grits is nasty. Whoa. Grits is good. But grits is amazing. Wait, I what? judge every soul food restaurant based on their grits. I don't eat grits. Them. I don't eat collard greens. So we're going to talk it's Platinos and Grill. I'm we Haitian, dude. We Haitian. Well, that was last week's episode. This is episode. It's episode 15, dogs. The T Tebow episode, aka Why God Soldier, aka where the whole armor of God, aka I come back in the full court to beat your team single handedly, aka the Vince Sandy episode. I got traded from Toronto and I dropped 50 on your Dion squad, aka half man, half amazing, aka I was dunked on your seven foot seven in the Olympics. Uh, oh, I episode know. 15, baby. Any of those people he just mentioned, but... You don't know Tim Tebow? No, Tim Tebow, yes. You don't know I, Vince Carter? Oh, Vince Carter. The nigga that's still playing ball and he's like 80 years old? Yes, I do know Vince Carter. But it didn't sound like you said Vince Carter. I, I said like, Vince Sanity. True yeah, fans will know like, that. Yeah, I was like, what? Because we ain't a true fan. No. That you, clearly, know that, you know that Vince Carter nickname was Vince Sanity, right? Clearly this is a wrestling podcast. You heard that before, right? So I would know wrestling. SpongeBob, Sanity. SpongeBob, no. But I love SpongeBob. But oh. let me tell you guys a little just quick like recap of my New Orleans experience. Um, so I literally got off the plane Saturday night and I went actually to my first Ring of Honor show, which was their Ring of Honor Supercard. And it was very, very, it was long as fuck. It was like WrestleMania long type shit. Like it was weird. But they like literally sold out the um, University of New Orleans arena. Um, had about probably like almost 10,000 people there. Really? Yeah, like it, it was a lot. Yeah, like it, it's crazy. But it was a well put together show. Um, seeing Kenny and Cody fight for the first time was really good. Awesome match. Ari was amazing. Alex was there. No, yeah, it was amazing. Alex was actually right above me. Like, he's, I think I saw you um, with your Cody shirt on. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Because I literally had, literally got there right when the show started. Mm. So, it's interesting because they have Bully Ray, um, aka Bubba, Bubba Ray from the Dudleys. They're kind of, he's kind of like their GM. In a sense, it's weird. But, like, he cut the illest promo, I think, in his career that night. Like, it just was a solid night. Like, they had, like, a ladder match, like, a tag team. They had, like, this three-man tag team division, um, which is really good. So, like, I was really excited and blessed to go for FRE. Shout out to my homeboy Chris for getting us tickets. Um, and then WrestleMania was the biggest show. Um, it was high as a fucking kite, believe it or not. It was weird. Um, shout out to Pete for that gummy. It was like watching WrestleMania on like 4D. Like, if you ever seen like going to the movies and have like the 4D experience, that's exactly how I watch WrestleMania for six hours. I don't dabble, dabble into drugs. No, but I'm just saying, like, if you ever went, boy, you drink Red Bull. That's way worse than. But if you ever like did like the 4D, like, or, or even been like on a road, and you drink muscle milk. That's way way worse. Or like, oh, wait, did you go to the VR World thing? Yes. Okay, so it was like watching WrestleMania in like VR World. Oh, okay. Shout out to, shout out to you for the plug, though. No problem. I got, for free. I got VR mad World plugs free. everywhere. Like to us, it's like everyday thing to us. Man. And then, yeah. No. But, but it was, just, <laughs> yeah. it was one of those. <laughs> it was I mean, one like, of those I'm like, go on. Oh my God, you're looking like it's kind of normal, you know? I mean, you guys smoke. Like, I had a, I didn't smoke. I had a gummy. Like, so it's very. We don't do edibles. See, yeah, I'd rather do an edible than no, smoke. No, you crazy? Like, no, I like my lips. And I like my lips. Several of them said, he's like, yo, Stay away from edibles. Mind you, he's the alter. He's what we he said edibles messed him up. I definitely Snoop Dogg said the same thing too. It's like, yo, edibles is a whole different was, game. Was because fucked. it's just a body high. It and is. Like, like literally. Whole, literally, whoo. I mean one time I had an edible or whatever, right? Boom. I was mad hungry, whatever. He just had, I had a mad flavor just, in it. So hold on, he just scrutinized me. Time out, time out, time out, time out. 
edible. Oh. You mad hungry? You had an edible? Yeah, because like that's I had a, actually not the best. But I'm gonna explain to you what happened. So I had an edible with him, right? You know, I had like he, he, he sells rice krispie treats. I was like, yo, this is not sugary, mind you. I don't eat sugar like that. So any sugar I, t- I detect, I was like, oh, it's not sugary, but it's good. I was like, dang. I'm you ate the whole rice krispie. I'm not finished. I was like, dang, I'm out to finish the next one. Mmm, have some water. I was like, I'm full, I'm good. I'm on the train. I was like, this is wild. And I'm like this. <laughs> so you were slumped? Just like this. Slump, B, slump. Up to 8th Avenue, son, I had to get off. I'm like, I don't feel like going to work, son. I, I got to I got to work you, mad with it. Whoa, okay, well, I didn't so have- So you train back to, to Brooklyn? I thought about that, but I had to go to work because, you know, yeah, the conductor kind of shook me. I was like, yeah, I'm good. Time That's a, okay. And then, wow. wild. This is why I stay with the animals. And then, and then the next but day, you was, but you OD'd. You OD'd. No, like, I literally, one. even one is bad. I literally, but no, but I had literally like this, like this yep. much. I had a small piece. Yeah. And you I had a Rice Krispie treat. You had done. multiple Rice Krispie treats. It was good, son. <laughs> you set yourself up for failure. But as my story continues, so the next night was Monday Night Raw, which is the Raw after Mania, which is always like the shit. And literally, I've never seen Larry Morgan, shout out to Larry, mark the fuck out for fucking Bobby Lashley coming out. Fucking AOP got called up. I marked out. Jeff Hardy came back. It was such a good night. And then shout out to my boys from True Hills. They, if you haven't seen on their YouTube page, they did Baby Seth versus SP3, their little match. It was honestly the funniest shit. Like 20 minutes of like the funniest thing. Like they did a True Hill compound thing. Like it was funny. So if you're on your, on YouTube, check them out. Those are my boys. So we all went to Raw together. I, I, True Hills? <laughs> I challenged you guys. <gasps> It's, put, it's been put out there. You need help? <gasps> I'm gonna need help. <gasps> got you, B. Yo, we got Double D in there too, man. Wait, the what? The bags of tricks. Double D? Yes, that's Double Dirty, D Leo. Yeah, Dirty, Dirty D, D Leo. Wow. You was there when we made the name. Yeah, but I thought we just left that no, in there. No, no, no. It's Double D Leo. Yeah. Dirty Dick Leo. I, I'm, I just always think Double D's like, I just think of my chest, but okay. So we just say Dirty Dick Leo. Okay, thank you, because we'll I'm like it, We'll keep it full. We'll keep it saying the full name. Thank you. You try to abbreviate it, but. Yeah, sorry. sorry I get confused. So I was thinking like that. <laughs> anyway, so, well, you hear that, Sid? They challenged you guys. So JJ with the Haitian brothers. and Baby Seven, you guys, you heard this. So that was Monday night, and then Tuesday was SmackDown, and it Saw was once again for Paige to come out as GM was definitely the curveball of them all. Definitely didn't see that coming, and for Carmella to the cash in. And the- hey, you thought she was gonna cash in on Nia? You thought she was gonna cash in on Nia? I thought she won though, regardless. In story. Let's talk about that. Let's actually talk about how black excellence ruled WrestleMania on the low. Like, from Cedric Alexander winning the Cruiserweight title. Keep talking. To Naomi Keep fucking talking. winning the Battle Royal. Keep talking. From Lekka Nia Jax winning the Women's World Championship. Like, I, like, when Naomi won, I literally got mad at Mojo though because I was just like, yo, they let her win two years in a row? Like, oh, oh my yeah. God. What? You see, I got confused about that. What? Like, I heard it was two years in a row, but did it have a women's battle royal last year? No, 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 not the battle royal thing. Like, Naomi won the, uh, the SmackDown champ. Women's title no. match. Oh, you mean two years in a row? You mean like two years in a row? Yeah, winning. correct. Oh, so okay, she okay, not okay. only won in her hometown last year, but then she won the first ever women's battle royal okay, at WrestleMania. Okay, okay. They like, see the future, B. That shit is they see the future, crazy. Come like, on. Black Excellence ruled oh. WrestleMania, so I, I needed to acknowledge that. They um, got Bobby Lashley back too, man. Black Lashley. <laughs> Young Bobby! What the hell? Yo, I've never seen him so excited about this. But, and then, so yeah, so Tuesday night. So Tuesday was SmackDown. It was Super Saiyan Big Oh my gosh. Okay, hey, y'all, okay, so I was actually on my way, like, I was on the bus from Philly to New York watching the podcast on Instagram. So those that are watching, thank you. Um, And what the fuck is this big dick thing about? Because. I need someone to explain this to me real quick before we actually get All into right, so our opening back segment. in the day, like I used to always tell my brother, like everything's just like a big accomplishment. You're doing big dick moves. That's, that was our conversation. You're doing big dick moves. Yeah. Big dick moves means you're doing it big. Yeah, you're doing it big. So <laughs> you can't big. use the word to define the word, but okay. <laughs> yes, you I get can. it. You can. Exactly. I get it, but, but okay. What is that? I forgot what it is. Is it an oxymoron or something? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Who gives a fuck? I mean, just like, you know, Chloe Kardashian, Chloe Kardashian naming her child true. Well, black men don't cheat. We don't. We don't. We black will not cheat. do this today. Especially Haitian men. We, we will cheat. not. Black men don't cheat. Haitian men don't cheat. Yeah. Okay, so guys, just know the viewers that are watching that these opinions are the opinions of Sir Wilkins. And but y'all know viewers is black men. And those that black are men viewing, don't cheat. Yes or no, cheat. ladies and gentlemen. We don't cheat. Black men don't cheat, right? We don't cheat. What? We don't cheat. We're faithful. We're faithful. Wow. You know? We're faithful. We're faithful. Faithful. Wow. Black men don't cheat. Wow. Canadian men cheat. Mm. That's Tristan Thompson. Mm. But black American men don't cheat. We don't cheat. Black Haitian American men don't, don't cheat. cheat. We yeah, actually don't cheat. No, I don't know, man. Once again, these views by these gentlemen here cheat, are me. not condoned by the Job Tears podcast, Faithful. okay? Faithful. All right, so, men out here. once again, shout out to literally everyone that was in New Orleans this past, like, last week. Um, it was a blast. Yes, I'm sorry. M-Z-J-E-S said lies. Oh, Miss Jazz? Come on, ma. Come yeah, on, ma. Yeah, so, like, Come on, man. It's, it's, a big it's debatable. Cheat you, man. Exactly. Don't cheat you well. Dark skin? Or he'll fucking keep you captive and be like, don't talk to him anymore. And she said, what is you lying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm lying. I, she hasn't tried a Haitian, the Haitian coconut. <laughs> Oh, anyway. and it's a Haitian for like my Zoes out there, the Zo, you know? The Zo coconut? You haven't tried it yet? I kind of like, that's that Miami thing, like the Haitian thing in Miami. Well, Kanye Weston said truth. Wait, exactly. who said it? What you wrestling? Exactly, he knows. Black men don't chew. Okay, we're them. not, we're going to move, we're actually, this is actually a great segue into our opening segment to Behind Girls Position. So yeah, our- Miss, she said, um, I have done the leg work. You see, I've done the leg work. Yeah. You nasty, mom. You nasty. I'm gonna be like, nasty. Yeah, nasty. even nasty. I knew that. I was like, nasty, I didn't think about it. I didn't like it. I was like, sure, he's a freak. So, as I said, this is actually a great into our opening segment. So, our OMG moment of this week are you guys team Cena or team Bella? So, apparently, after six years team of being Zeta. together, signing a fucking contract to live in some man's house, which you bitch, you should have never did, but you did anyway. After six years and a proposal that was fake, so WrestleMania 33 is all fake and a lie. Just want to let all wrestling fans know, Men in Black us all this past, like last Sunday, but John Cena and Nikki Bella are no more. They announced that, actually it was weird, because it was like, I feel like the day it was like, the day it was like a week after WrestleMania, so it was like, I just saw you guys. And then, so they put out a joint, you know, thing on their Instagram, on their social media saying like, you know, they decided to separate. And apparently the rumor was, was that we're actually gonna get married, Tango de Mayo and a destination wedding. So the, the day was coming and somebody pulled back. So what, I'll start off with my single black man here, Mr. Black. She plugs, you know, for all the ladies that are watching, he's single. <laughs> Mr. Black, what are your thoughts on... <laughs> she can smile it that hard. <laughs> I knew what I was doing. This woman can smile it that hard. Go ahead, talk but to you have to understand, this is, this is the first time she gave me a compliment. I know, that's why I did it. I was screen. like, I came back so I from vacation. That. So I, I gotta so good. take it for what I have to get. Absolutely. So talk to us. Let us know, what are your thoughts? Should we be blaming Nikki Bella for breaking off the engagement, the wedding, all all of this, or should we be looking at John Cena like he's the asshole in this? To tell you the truth, we don't know exactly what happened. We don't know what was said between both sides. They both, they, we don't know. So, I'm happy this happened because myself, Ziggler could get up in that, son. Oh, whoa. You know? So, oh, like, everybody's team battle team Cena. I'm team Ziggler, baby. You know? Spit him! Talk to him! You see, my, my son's red him. hot right now. My son got the Drew McIntyre. My nigga got the HBK Diesel. Yo, shout out to Lala. She said that. She's like, is HBK and I Diesel all over again? All over again. But so, the one thing why it's going to be better, because cause HBK the at the time, no, no, HBK at the time wasn't Shawn Michaels. Dolph is basically carbon copy of Shawn Michaels, but don't disrespect Dolph like that, B. No, 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 no. <laughs> but like listen, this is but like how he has his own twist. He has, you know, it's very similar. Drew McIntyre can run circles over Diesel. Anything. Most wrestlers can. Exactly. So this is a better version of it. And the fact that Drew McIntyre can actually talk, bring more intensely, and actually draw in, unlike Diesel during that time, the worst drawn champion ever. But I mean that win is a win. Of course, I'm not taking that, but overall, yo, real talk, we don't know what's been said. And you don't know if she was kind of just fed up with living with all the rules. Y'all watch all the divas. This nigga got like, like he has 8, mad rules. rules. Like, you know, the men's made fun of him, like, you gotta sleep like this. 
You gotta see corner like this. You gotta brush your teeth up and down like this. Yo. <laughs> that was so funny. Yo, it was so good. It was hilarious. Oh, that was the best segue ever, that. Yo, that was the best build up ever. But the fact that, like, this way, let's, let's look at the standpoint. Let's, let me look at her end. She probably got tired of the rules. She probably got tired of living like a, like, like, like a, like, 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 like Trump's wife and not have a real sense of freedom. No, so I she, think she's pretty free. Well, no, we don't know that. But that's what I'm saying. No, that. I mean, when you watch Total Bell, right. it's like, this bitch does her own thing. Right, but like, I'm talking about how the standpoint was right there. You don't know what was said. Cena, you don't know if it was just kept on bickering and arguing, this, that, and third. He wasn't home enough, this, that, and third. He's like, y'all trying to do what I have to do, ma. Like, I'm trying to make this bag, ma. She's like, you don't know. So, I'm thinking the most neutral, neutral approach. I'm, I'm, I'm happy because Dolph got a chance now. He's shooting wow. shot. I mean, but what? what? <laughs> all right, all right. Because I'm not trying to get into that. Cause I don't know what's really going on with there. Good. So the most neutral approach is Team Dolph. You got a chance, baby. So you better shoot your shot like Curry from the stands. You gonna make it though? Because he been working out. Lately. No, my nigga definitely got courage in that episode of Total Divas. Like you think that was hard? Good? It was real. Like no, no, no. no. I just said the relationship, but you think him getting curved like that was scripted? I mean, yes and no. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, her man was John fucking Cena. Like, for this nigga to approach her to the side, I was like, look, I can give you what you really, what you want. It's like, my nigga, we on TV. Like, don't, don't out me out like that. Like, I get which I get where you're coming from, but like, don't out me yeah, on TV. But I don't know if that's all the work. What do you think, boy? All right, so we'll get into the relationship and the guy in the room, what are your thoughts on the breakup between John Cena and Nikki Bella? Relationship guy in the crew, what are your thoughts on Nikki Bella and John Cena's breakup? So, real talk, I don't know what happened with the inside the house. See? So, I'm gonna keep it a buck. But I'm gonna let these jokes fly off me. We doing this podcast, I'm gonna have some fun with this shit. And I'm gonna keep it honestly from a man's point of view. And from the outside looking in. John didn't want this shit. At all. I don't know, he didn't want that. I don't know why people are, are like talking about, oh, oh my God, what happened? John was in a messy divorce. First of all. Real messy. That's number one. Let's really talk about that. Messy divorce. From a guy standing up, he's like, yo, I'm going to live my, my best life right now. He met Nikki. Real talk, I don't know what that thing was. Maybe she was just like, Something casual. Yeah, it looks like it started out fun. Very fun, very casual. That like any typical woman, she caught feelings. She did. She did. John was putting that power lifting, Olympic lifting type penis on it, like bomb, <laughs> bomb, bomb. Okay. And the thing about it, he's the top guy in WWE. Yeah. Yeah. She was like Dolph, John, Dolph. I'm getting this John. This Johnson, boss. Literally, man, that was boss. So she goes to John. You can tell John was listening about this, this, this Not line like at all. Mm -hmm. One thing that I watched Total Divas. Yeah, I spoke about Total Bellas and Total Divas. Shit is, shit is good. Shit fire. Is fire. If you watching the men's show coming you, out too? If you, I'm not, of course, I'm watching the men's show. So, but anyways, he told he didn't want Birdie's. Not Birdie. I'm saying Birdie. No, it uh, was. No, 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 no. I'm talking about um. He, he didn't want um, Bree's, it's his daughter, right? Yeah, no, it's daughter to call him Uncle John. Dirty, yeah. You had it right. He was like on some like, nah. Like, I, I don't want no parts of that. I like, don't want no parts of that. I was, that would have been. And he doesn't want kids. That would have been the red flag for me. And then he's like, make you sign a 75 page contract. To live in your house. Bruh. And, 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 and I say this for all women out there. The signs are always there. Facts. Read them. Facts. Men always tell you what it is from the jump. Like if, like if, a, like if a nigga want to just smash, he will actually just be. He like, will Yo, tell you, and I his actions will this. tell you that shit. But the difference between a boy and a man. No, but the thing about a boy it, will tell you that. Yeah, but a man, just... men will or tell you in some way or another. The red flags are there. So I'm gonna tell you a little story. Mm, story time. Wait, story time with Sir Wolf. Wait, wait. Capture come right will here. This, will this story get you in trouble? I don't give a fuck. I'm telling some stories. Okay, I just want. The wife knows about this story. Okay, all right. As long as it doesn't get, get you in trouble. Ladies and gentlemen on IG, ladies and gentlemen on YouTube, we're gonna talk for a little bit. Mm. Story time with Sir Wilkins. Mm. I was dealing with this young lady. Wait, do I know this person? You obviously know this person. <laughs> dealing with this young lady. And you know, she was like, what do you want? And I said, from the jump, ma, 
I don't want nothing serious from job. Okay. I said, I'm just trying to figure things out. I know who he's talking about now. And she was like, she was getting her feelings about it. And you know, we ain't, we ain't even fuck. Damn. We were just messing, we were just talking. You kissed her? Of course, yeah. I'm a nasty dude, B. I'm a nasty dude. Tongue? I'm no longer nasty, though. I'm no longer nasty. You have that tongue, though? I gave her some tongue. Did bitch. you? That's like, hey, my, Was it on my roof? No, no, no. It's something about somebody different. So, I thought it's all about somebody different. Yo, you're not going to criminate me. I'm not going to get jumped in that conversation. So, somebody different. So, yeah. And then Shorty, Shorty's like, next thing he asked me, I'll get like about a month later, two months later, like, what am I looking for? My nigga, I told you two months ago, not in serious. I'm in Jump Street. I don't even know what's up. And then she tied. So what I think the situation was, Nikki was like, yo, I'm going to get this dude. I'm going to get this dude because you know what? I see the potential in him. Top guy in WWE. Uh, he making good money. He making me laugh. I'm feeling good about myself. But the making mom, me nice. mom, open up your eyes. He don't want that. He don't want the air plus he hurt. We ain't talking about job. We're not. We're not. He ain't hurt. He come up with messing with us. He's like, yo, fuck this shit. Now, and I really believe this. There's a low key. Johnson wants to be, wants to be better than The Rock. He oh, can't yeah. Be. He can't like, be. Like deep down inside, I think he that's wants to have goal. a bigger career than The Rock. He can't be. You yeah. never know. Because I think, yeah, you don't know. Because I think it's the same, like, I mean, as much as I shit on Hogan, I always said Hogan opened a Hollywood door. And I think Rock went into Hollywood like, I want to be better than Hogan. Yeah. And then now John Cena has that same opportunity, the same shit is creeping up on him. And I think to motivate him, he's like, I want to be you better than The Rock. I think I agree with you. John <laughs> Cena might be better than The Rock. No, because, I- let, me, let me, hold on. Because The Rock... Acting took him a while to really put it full throttle. John Cena's ahead of the curve because his acting is better. Yeah, I saw him in Blockers. Phenomenal. Don't ruin it for me. Either. It's yeah. really fucking funny. Yeah. I, you should go I saw that. someone, someone told me that it's a non-wrestling fan was like, John Cena is mad funny. No, he killed it. He Period. killed it in Blockers. He killed it in the Amy Schumer train wreck movie. Oh, yeah. that movie was great. He bodied it. He was great. So he has potential to be better than The Rock, yeah. but he ain't there yet, but he wants to. Yeah. Now, his career's popping off. Facts. You think he's gonna slow down? No. And Nikki wants a family. She wants, and the thing, another thing about what, what women do, they compare themselves to other women. And right there's a sister. Her sister's right there, they're doing her thing, and women get so caught up. Competitive. Oh, tell me more. I'm being up, keeping it up. Keep I'm above. saying, tell me more. We get, they get so caught up with like, this person has this lifestyle that I want. Yeah. So I'm gonna try to duplicate this shit with the person that I'm with. No, nigga. I know different type yeah, of life. Like, I know numerous occasions where like my homegirls would tell me that, yo, this girl's competing. I'm like, what do you mean? I had four kids, then she ended up having four kids. But I did it with my husband. I would never want to Well, listen, wait, 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 listen. Like, <laughs> Shorty did to me, like, I did it with my husband, but she did it with multiple baby daddies. Some people go about rules very wrong. It, but it's people want that. Everyone wants the happy ending. We all do. And then sometimes and this is from my point of view, I don't know. Chicks force that happy ending. Because that's how badly they want it. And they force it onto right. a guy that doesn't want that happy ending. Not yet though. Yeah, but the thing is- Or not can't. ever. Like you at the end of the day, you can never and this is one thing I said like in our little group chat thing. I was like, you can never change like at the end of the day, you can't change someone that does not want to be changed. So for Nikki, you went into the situation knowing John Cena had these rules, had had this different, had this way and look at life where he was like, to be honest, I could just be living with you, not married and be set for life. And then I, I do think the whole engagement thing, especially on the grandest stage of the mall was Shut a bit up. much. And I don't think they should have, he should have did, did that. Should have never did that. I mean, even if they, let's say would have got married or whatever, I still think certain things are just left outside of WWE world and outside of the limelight like that. Especially because of the type of relationship he had previously that was very public, very like everyone knew John Cena was just like not with the shit. But not really outside the wrestling world. I mean, but it's, I mean, right. an engagement like, like 
look at like Bree and and Brian and um, Daniel Bryan. They probably got engaged. Was definitely not on TV. Was definitely very intimate, very different. Like probably just the two of them. He didn't want it on on, my, on, on the show. He was like, right, no. like he didn't even want his daughter on the show, let yeah. alone the pregnancy, her doing photos. So like certain things should just be, be you and, and that person. And because the reason why is too much energy. Yeah. Negative energy towards something. Like people don't, and, and I tell people all the time, like we're all of us, all three of us all on social media, especially me. But your privacy between your relationship, the more public you put it in, the more yeah, negative the energy way. goes towards it. And women are so caught up with that shit. I wanna be on your Instagram. I wanna be this, blah, 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 blah. But on the biggest grand things of things, it's like- no one's, no one's business. It's nobody's business. And the fact that they have an idea, like not, not like a lot of females around our, our age group, like if you don't put on social media and official. Nigga, it don't have to be official. Oh, but they see Beyonce, Jay-Z, relationship goals. Nigga, that's in our own goals. Stop imitating goals exactly. of others. It's our own goals. Beyonce, Jay-Z had mad problems. Mad problems. But no one, no one didn't do it, you know? No one knows about it. But they kept it. things private. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Niggas know about it. Not <laughs> now. Well, well, people knew about it in the, like, the underlying of things. But anyway. All right, so any last words on Nikki Bella and John Cena's departure from each other's lives? Listen, cause... I wish them luck in whatever they, they yeah. do. Um... Like if they get back together, that'd be great. That'd be real good. You know what? It's one of those things. Like once you honestly done, you there's no. I mean, it might be casual that. hookups every every once in a while. Nah, because this nigga definitely was like per contract. Get your all your shit out of my I don't house. Think he'll, I don't think he'll actually like enforce the contract. Okay, no. he should have this one. Okay, that, y'all, that. y'all think that, that y'all that, know. no? That'd be some real dickhead movie. Yeah. But he isn't like no it's bullshit. Six years, bro. It's six years. Yo, bro. I. I was with someone for five and a half, six years. I've seen some of the most dickhead shit ever. So like, no matter how long you've been with somebody, right. like if they were a dick from day one, they gonna be a dick day 2,986. You know what I mean? Like, a dick is a dick. Pause. Yeah, and, and I've seen some chicks do some fucked up shit. That's what I'm saying, like, no matter, like, no matter if you guys are together for two weeks, two years, 3,000 days, like, Assholes are assholes. But I, I really hope, hope, cause I think she's really hurt by this. Yeah. Like they you know said what's that, crazy? Um, I think it's the reverse. What? I don't think it's her that's her. I think it's him. What? I think for John Cena, I think it's a, cause men, I mean, I'm a prideful, I'm a prideful female period. So like almost to like on some nigga level shit. But like guys are so prideful and I think his pride is hurt. And I think that's one of the things that as when you do a breakup, that's the one thing that will hurt you to the core is your pride. So I think for John Cena to be like, yo, I actually was, I, I, I put up my hands, like I waved the white flag and I was gonna, you know, I was gonna give you, but then she was just like, don't just, you know, pity marry me, like marry me because you wanna marry me. I, I, I can see that. You don't know what's been said exactly. You, you know what's been said, but also, you also gotta think about like. I mean, but looking from like, to, like from the show, like just watching, you can see like even her family and like breathe me on some like, yo, like fuck is you, like this is not really what you want. And we know that. Well, well the thing is, Nobody really knows what they want when it comes to relationships. A lot, very few people know exactly what they want. Yeah, you don't really know until you're in it. You're right. It's it's really hard, and also it's a lot of insecurities involved. Of course, because you're not vulnerable to on both sides. You have to be vulnerable to that person. You, you gotta carry but, your but insecurities like, and other person's insecurities. But also, like we we gotta look at John of what he went through before, right? And what he's trying to do. And John, like John is about to John, and, yeah, and, and he's John, been like that from day one. Because the thing about it, he wants to be that top guy, and in order to be that top guy, you have to be selfish. You got to make and, certain and you sacrifices. Have to be with the, the person that's willing to understand why you're being selfish. Yeah, like a lot of a lot of women want a successful guy, but they don't want to be a successful guy while while you're shooting in the gym. Exactly. And like, I want to understand that you're gonna sit on. Sit on the sideline while he takes a hundred shots. But see, my thing is, why can't we? Why can't I take fifty shots? And you take fifty shots. Um, no, it's not about you. It's not about that's you. The thing, that's the thing women forget. It's not about you. It's about him. No, but I'm just saying, like, it's I'm not. I'm just saying, like, in terms of when you with somebody, it's about being supportive of their dreams and their goals. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying, like, how come it's not like where if you're shooting a hundred, be like, yo, babe, I got you know, let me support you, let me shoot but with you. I, I'm gonna say a ten point for me. 
I don't need you to shoot 100 shots, 50 shots with me. I need you to make sure that I'm hydrated, make sure that I have no injuries, this, that, and third, and vice versa. Because when it's your time to shine, yo, it's all about you. But why you can't do all of that? Because sometimes you have to like yeah, you take to, a step yeah, back. Yeah, take a step it's gonna, back. It's gonna take too much energy at one point. Yes, and the fact like, is, it's like it's ooh. always good to have somebody take a step back and warn you about certain stuff. Let you know, like, yo, babe, you shouldn't do this, this, that, third, because you're not so much in it. This is why you need a support system, and vice versa. As a man, yo, if I were a girl, I understand that she's a motivated speaker. Yeah, that's yo. That's <laughs> And, and like, like, um, let's say she's more of a speaker. Yo, I gotta make sure that had a, a car got gas in it. I gotta make sure that she has a halls. I gotta make sure she has a favorite drink, whatever, whatever. And I know that by first I get that. And 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 the thing is, like, for instance, for instance, when she was working to get back into the, in, in, into WWE, but she had the neck. neck injury, whatever, blah blah yeah, yeah. blah. He was helping her train. Like, yo, come through with me. I'm gonna do this with you. I'm gonna help you out with this. Now. But then they're also what they wanted was different. First of all, if you knew from day one you wanted kids and he didn't want kids, that should have been like That's let's done. just go. That should have been done as we separate. Like the first third. 90 days you fuck it with somebody like on some real committed like me and you type shit, those are the conversations you need to have. You want kids. But and we don't know if he was like, yo, maybe I'm yeah, like, you no. know if you flip that. Everyone knows that nigga from day one said no. Nah, but then again though, like like you said. Everyone knows that. The fact that he said this, this is a clear Sign. I don't want that little girl to call me Uncle John. Yeah, when he yeah, said that was, TV, that was yo, that was like, I was like, oh, that, when I heard that, that, I was like, like you, 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 you doing the most, like, you, you the fuck? too much. But so, like, let's circle this all in, guys. Yeah. How we ended this? When I see this, is wish them luck. Yeah, wish them luck. About you. Wish them luck. You know, Dolph. Wow. Take a shot. I, I, I Dolph, think, Dolph needs to take a, take a shot. I think both parties. But need to just, if Dolph takes a shot, it's. Matter of fact, I think Dolph is like low key untouchable right now. He signed a new contract. He do what the fuck you want to do, and he got the modern day Diesel, but better. I think he he good. Yo, shoot your shot, Dolph. Wow. Shoot your shot, Dolph Ziggler. All right, so we're gonna actually move on to so those that have the pleasure of once again having that nine ninety nine on the WWE Network. There is a new show that is premiering pre premiering actually today in real life time, so Wednesday. So if you guys are watching yeah. after this. The <laughs> the Bruce Pritchard podcast, something else to wrestle with, is premiering today. So it is on the WWE Network today, Monday? Wednesday. So those that are watching on the Instagram live feed, you can after the show, of course. Please, after the show. Go on WWE Network and watch it. But basically, his podcast is coming to the WWE Network. So And basically, he got some like awesome deal where it really is the... They can talk about whatever they want to talk about. I mean, they're of course they're not going to talk about. They're going to not talk about three specific things, which is like death, death, and more death. But oh, Chris Benoit. People, yeah, death, death, and more death. But <laughs> it is because hey, hey. because he because he it was his Chris, his, kids, his wife. Then Chris. Yeah, like death, Damn. death. Damn. Damn. That's coming three. Yeah. <laughs> okay, they just handshaked about death. All right, so. <laughs> but and for those that are watching his first episode, he's actually talking about my favorite WrestleMania, which is WrestleMania 14. So. 14. What was? Austin, uh, HBK. Oh. You should have 13? No, nope, it's 14. <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm not saying you're wrong. But no, for some reason, I had 13 in my head. Well, I don't know. Because uh, 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 I don't know. Huh. So Austin became God. Yes. The, the beginning. I put down the page, the highlight. The beginning of Austin 3, really Austin 316. Yeah, of the course. Railroad. Solid. So what are your thoughts? So, Sir Wilkins, what are your thoughts about actually, they're actually putting a podcast on the network, which I think is really, really dope, especially in this era where every, like, everybody in mom says a podcast. Oh, no. Podcast. Sidebar. It says nothing is, nothing is off limits, including Chris Benoit, anyway, wrong. And no, but I said, but death, I death. said death, death, and more death. Oh, okay, cool, death. cool, cool, cool. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> Thank you. It's like the mega powers just now. So, but I'm macho, and unfortunately, you're Hogan, so that's sad. Um, okay. I had a show, Thunder in Paradise. That's Yo, that was my shit. In Paradise. Paradise. No bullshit. Girl, pretty. Oh, 
No, and when they and they were smart, marketing was smart because they put that shit right before Nitro came on, so you watch that shit and it went right into Nitro. Yep. It's genius. Little ass kids in open hood now. That fucking boat. And then fucking yeah. Sting was on there as a fucking heel. Yeah, oh, that episode where that like the blew ghost my came shit. in the boat with something control them. Yeah, like the boat ran by itself. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. they gotta put that shit on TV. Put that on the network. Please. So, so look, what are your thoughts on a? them putting a podcast on a network and be actually it being Bruce Pritchard because a lot of people you know they have like Edge and Christian has a podcast Austin has a podcast and he was doing stuff on the network once upon a time um, you know Lydia and Garcia has an amazing podcast so, I love Lydia and Garcia so what are your thoughts on them choosing Bruce Pritchard aka Brother Love to do a podcast do his podcast on a network so let's break it down real quick them having a podcast makes sense on, on, the, on the thing um, we're, we're in that era now and there's going to be a time where labels are going to be signing podcasts. Um, when we look at the title has their own podcast section. Spotify has their own podcast section. WWE Network is just keeping up with the times. Of course. Now, Bruce having a, having a thing, his podcast is popular regardless. It's popping. Like, it does numbers. So, WWE's like, yo, come on board. Yeah. We'll give you creative control because it makes sense. And it's not on the station, like, <coughs> USA. So, we don't need to control you that as much. So, so we can give you that creative control. Just don't talk about Christian Watt killing people. Death, death, and more death. That's it. And you're good. And we good. I so, they're this. okay. And they can give that, and he's been in the business for so long to get that background feel, that backstage of like what happened on this particular day. And you start off with, with WrestleMania 14? Of course. 316. Amazing. You, of, you start off with that, and it's, it's content. And they need quality content. Yeah. And that's what wrestling fans are looking for. Exactly. Quality content on a number one network for wrestling. Yeah. WWE. All right, so Mr. Black, what are your thoughts on this new podcast? And is there another podcast you would like to see on the WWE Network? Yeah. What kind of question is that? What kind of question is that? A cheap plug, but I, I besides us, clearly. Call us. Um, either, you find your girl. Like, um, either our podcast or Lillian Garcia's podcast. Okay. Because I feel like she's like, um, um, you know, um, Auntie Lily at this point. And everybody's so comfortable, you know, shout out to Ivy with that plug last what she said about her. That's Auntie Lily right there. And everyone's so comfortable around her and she's familiar with WWE. She's been there for so many years. Why not put her on there? Okay. Who's Pritchard podcast? It's great. Example, WrestleMania 14. I don't know how they would do like the, um, the structure of the show. If you're watching this, you break down WrestleMania 14, you, you might go like, Dang, that was actually a good pay per view to the to like the newer fans or people just you know the younger fans like all right so I'm done with this let me go for a little WrestleMania 14 or or there might be a topic of I remember they covered WWE ECW let's say how they covered that on the network okay was it that bad okay let me go watch and watch it now you end up in like a rabbit hole watching WCW um, um, WWE ECW so this is great or they give you more insight on certain feuds. Like, one thing they talk about was the HBK of Shawn Michaels. I think they talk about I'm not too sure about that. They talk about that. They said they don't talk about it. Talk about that. Man, they had a lot of matches. WWE set up a playlist. It could be called WWE Bruce Pritchard's Playlist. Everyone eats. And now, talk to him. And now, and now, and now, what if, like, they do, instead of them just talking like this, put little sh shorts or little drawings of people talking about what will happen, people eat. Everyone eating. It's crazy out here. Talk to him. Talk to him. Fire. That's Fire. It. What you guys think about this This coming on the network, by the way, live on the, Insta on yeah, the Instagram. Yeah, so those that are watching on the Instagram live feed, let us know what you think about Bruce Pritchett's podcast um, being on the WWE Network, which is now available on the WWE Network. So, you know, next week, maybe we'll, you know, touch on a few pointers. We'll all watch it and, and get an idea. Because I, I heard you guys talking about the Andre the Giant documentary, and we watched it, actually, um, the last night we were in New Orleans. And the documentary was so good. Like, I, I wanted to just throw that in there because you guys talked about it last week and I wasn't here. But I had to put that two cents in. Like, it was such... And I felt bad because... 
all the stories they were saying about Andre the Giant and them saying like he was actually really sad. Like people would make fun of him and all types of things like that. Like that shit is that shit hurt. Like I was like, oh my god. Like you know what I found out there is because Andre the Giant. I, this may sound really ignorant, but I didn't know that Big Show had this as the same issue. Yeah, yeah, you didn't yeah. know. I just yeah. thought Big Show was mm-hmm. a big dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Naturally, but they fixed it because of modern technology. No. no, but the thing is, he took he, he took he had a surgery. Yeah, yeah, he did. But they gave Andre Giant the same option. Mm-hmm. He and Andre didn't want it. I didn't know that. Yeah. He turned it down. He was like, yo, I'm just live my life. I thought that and was just die. like, um, they didn't have the, um, no, they no, yeah. When, um, when Big Show came, like first came into WWE, like that, that, um, Valentine's Day massacre thing, yeah. I had looked it up and they had, and it said, he said that he was like, I had the same disease as Andre the Giant. So that's why he really related to him because he said, I know the same, like, and I think he d- even did a DVD and he talked about having the disease. He did. He and did say that talking and, um, about, that like, too. Yeah, and talking about like how like growing up as a kid, like he was one size one year, and then the next size, the next year he was like five size more, and kept growing, 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 and you know it's just it's just crazy what modern technology will do. But he's in the best shape of his life. Best shape. He looks hot. Best shape. Yeah, he's in the best shape of and uh, and I know we shit on him here and there because they do that because of the fucking flip out because he likes to flip flop heel and face. Yeah, so but annoying. You gotta respect the fact he's been in business for so, so long. long. Like Solid. we're talking about the giant with who had long hair and fucked up Hogan to then throwing you Austin. Like you don't feel like you're daydreaming right now. No, I'm, I'm good. Okay. I'm good. Okay. They but, saw that too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Speaking of old school. Speaking of old school, we're gonna go for the tweet of the week, which is a little bit on the sad side. So those in real time, today we lost a living legend. Bruno Sammartino had passed away early this morning, which was Wednesday, um, in YouTube land. That's gonna be watching this later. Um, and Triple H did a really, really nice tweet, so I'm gonna read it out. So Triple H said, devastated to hear the passing of a true legend, true icon legend, great, honest, and wonderful man, a true friend and one of the toughest people I've ever met. My thoughts are with his entire family. Hashtag RIP Bruno San Martino. Hashtag American Dream. So what are your thoughts on, and I'll you know leave it up to either one of you guys to start off. What are your thoughts on Bruno San Martino's and his impact on wrestling in general? Because for those that don't know, he was the longest reigning champion. He had 2,803 days as champion. So you do the math. Jesus Christ. And he was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2013 um, by um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, no, Trips. Well, Trips. Um, but that's calling him, call him Trips. Because no. he is Trips. Yes. Triple H. Um, so, yeah, him so and yeah, because yeah, because Bruno and Vince didn't talk for years. Like, didn't, didn't, there was no communication and that's just Vince's MO. Like, once he, like, don't really fuck with you like that, he's just not gonna fuck with you. And Trips was the jump start and Bruno and Vince and all of them coming to the table and then once that conversation started and rolled is when he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. So, um, I'll let either one of you start. Um, what are your thoughts on Bruno San Martino's impact on wrestling today? Bruno is the first superstar wrestler. Yeah. Point blank. Yes. Like he had two matches of, of the year under his belt. Mm-hmm. Um, like he was at the third annual Olympic Battle Royal. Like he was main eventing at Shea Stadium with Larry Sabisco. Yeah. The live, the living, like the, he was legit living. the king of New York, wrestling wise. Of course. And for people who don't want to, who are listening on audio, on YouTube, on Instagram. We're not really familiar with him because we didn't get to really live live that, but he's like what LeBron is today to basketball. He's like what The Rock was to us in the Attitude Era. He's like what Stone Cold was to us in the Attitude Era. He's like basically, he's the prototype. Yeah, he's the prototype. He's the face of WWF. Yeah, like hey. WWF. WWF, whatever you want to call him at the time. The biggest star. David Meltzer say some dickhead shit about he really didn't sell, didn't sell out MSG that many times. We get it. Shut the fuck up. It's too early. To How talk do you talk about, about the dead like that? Like, bro. Because because <laughs> he saw it. You could have said it when he was alive. No, because he wanted to pull in ratings because he's going to do like a top 10 things about Bruno San, San Martino today. That's because he's, he's a piece of shit for that. Anyways, long story short, he's the 
biggest thing at the time for wrestling. Of course. Like, before Kayfabe was broken, when he lost his title the second time around, mm -hmm. people cried. Like, the person he, he lost it to had to sneak out because there had been a riot against him. Wow. So that's the good old days about wrestling, like the 60s or 70s, like where kayfabe was just like, and even some parts of the 80s, like some where parts like of the people, 90s. yeah, like where people legit was like crying and upset and like wanted to like kill people. But Vince had to do what he had to do, not to pay those taxes. Yeah. But also, when it came to like, when he got came back like in the 1980s, he was still in phenomenal shape. There's stories about how he would blow, like blow up the other wrestlers. Blow up meaning that the wrestlers would get tired, like exhausted in the ring working with him. Like he was like in his fifties at the time, right. and He's still with, like twenty something year old, thirty something year olds, and like just out working him. He was in phenomenal shape. He he, he lived a long life, mm -hmm. and I never really saw him really work. Yeah, but I appreciate what he did for the business. Yeah. Like he's like the George Mikan of, of wrestling, yeah. the first superstar of his sport, and you gotta respect it. You gotta clap it up do, for yeah. what he did for the sport of wrestling. Of Absolutely. All right, Mr. Black, what are your your little your, your thoughts on? What you to just say about it? You, you really cover all the basics of him. So I was gonna say like, yo, Bruno was like, I'm, I'm not really familiar with him. R.I.P. We respect the dead. Respect, I hope prayers out to his family. But overall, though, like, you got to respect what he did. You know, the fact that he ushered in that prototype, the big star, and what mm -hmm. the prototype, to this day, a lot of companies, Kundari, still follows that. Overall, give it what he did. You know, I'm happy that he's inducted while he was alive. Like, the, the saying goes, give flowers, yeah. give flowers, but I can still smell it. I'm happy that he's in, in the Hall of Fame while he was still alive. And what happened? So I wish Macho had that. Macho yeah. didn't want to be inducted. Oh, dang. No, but I mean, but neither did Bruno. But they yeah. talked about they it. Talked right, about that's it. what I'm saying. Like, they tried, they tried had a alive, conversation about it. Overall, just end it all. Yo, Bruno, thanks for what you did. The wrestling, you know. Absolutely. Like, you know, he just like walked by Frazier, what he did for the Knicks. So And Suits Around America. Oh, man. Ha <laughs> 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 See, anything I knew that. All right, so our last um, point to our opening segment, it was just the rumor of the week. So this rumor is that there is soon to might be a female announcer being added to either Raw or SmackDown, which is, I think, which is really awesome. Um, so I'll leave it to either one of you guys that actually started. Who do you... I'll go with it. Okay. Who do you think, if they do go down this road of adding a female wrestler... I mean, announcer to the squad, would it be, which brand would it be and who would it be? SmackDown is more of the ex, um, experimental territory more. So I say SmackDown first, but if they want to, you know, even SmackDown Raw is good. SmackDown, you know, is good for like training up, whatever. Raw because it's more of a grander scale. Boom. Um, either Beth Phoenix or Lita. Got it, Lita. Got you, Cappy. You know, because what Lita did for the for the women's tournament, great commentary. She was really great. She was really into it. This that and third. Was she though? She was really into it. This that and third. <laughs> so it's just like so. It's just like either Lita or Beth Phoenix. You know, but if you want to go really, you know, break barriers, go my boo Jacqueline. That's a throwback boo right there. Uh huh. All right. Mm -hmm. Hashtag Black Excellence. So, Lucas, what are your thoughts? Which brand? would get a woman, a female announcer, and who do you think it would be? All right. I really hope this is not forced. Facts. Like, not like, oh, we're gonna do this because the women's revolution. We're doing it because we want another announcer. Yeah. And we're gonna try to like, just do new, try something new. Yeah, I agree with We're that. not doing this because it's women's revolution, we want to force a chick on there. Yeah, you can't Let's just that. keep it a buck. I don't want this if this is a forced thing. Me either. So, now that I said that. Mm -hmm. Disclaimer. Quick disclaimer. Who would I want? Beth Phoenix, definitely. You mentioned it, that would be great, but I kind of low-key want Lillian Garcia. Dang, why didn't think of that? Put Lillian in there. Yeah, yeah, solid. As an announcer, though? Yeah. Like, on the broadcast team? Yeah, why not? Why not? She has She has been there for mad long. For mad long. She knows how to deal with Vince. Because being an announcer, you with Vince in your, in your ear, ear, 
it's really, yeah, yo, really hard to do. Yo, I think Lillian Garcia is a better move. But I mean, I feel like, all no bullshit, I feel like the announcer should be someone that has been in the ring. Who been, who been out? Oh, come on. Not everybody's been in the ring. No, right, which I agree, but I feel like those that give, like, uh, give both the, col- the color commentary and also the technical side of things. Is someone that had actually been in the ring. So the best will be that being so a leader. But my dark horse is Lennon Garcia. Lennon Garcia. <laughs> yeah, because I feel right. like it makes more sense. You know, look at um um your spouse. You probably say his name better than me. Morello, Borello, something like that. He's definitely Italian. Shoot, dang. <laughs> Listen, you know what I say his name. And I really actually don't, but I don't They're very close about. when it comes to like the language. Well, yeah, yeah because yeah. they're they're all um, what the, they're called um, ro- romance languages. So basically, yeah. they all right. have the same sounds, but different words. Right. Like that. But, but you're talking about um, Morrow, who's on NXT. Morrow. Maro, Morrow, you know. The guy from NXT. You know, for this moment on. The non black. You know, guy on NXT. I'm gonna say M, my son, young M, because he does a lot of boxing and stuff like he that. He does UFC but too. He's not, he's like, he never stepped into the ring. And the fact that when he called matches, and I was upset when he left SmackDown because he was the best commentator on SmackDown. Well, that's because it's his passion. Though. But yeah, it's passion. So you don't need experience but, in the ring to overshadow your passion. Look at JR, the voice of our childhood. Never was wrestling. Talk like, to him. The passion, you felt that. Uh, my personal favorite, Jeff Hardy. Climbing up to the ladder. Oh, Damn I it, make it sweet, kid. Damn it, get it, kid. Da, 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 da. How many people that go around wrestling to this day, they be like, imitate JR? My God, by God, by God. Oh, Stop my God. He has a family. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but if we're going to These are guys passion, that never stepped just, in the ring. I just don't see Lillian Garcia, Garcia doing that. Like, I see the announcer side of her, but, like, actually, like, calling matches, I'll be you like... Never uh, you never know. You never know. You never know. Oh, my man, Coachman. One person, oh, my gosh. But Coachman took years. Years. So? He never was in the ring. But one person that I actually would, like, I guess my dark horse would be um, Medusa. She would be one person I would want to just give a trial and see what she would say on the mic because she could cut promos back in the day and she know and she's been in the ring and she knows she knows wrestling. So That's a good idea. Medusa would be my okay. pick. Um, but Beth Phoenix is not a bad pick either. You know, especially her doing she's gorgeous. Oh. Edge one on that one. The really, one. everyone won. Matt Hardy won. Edge won. You know where they all that came from, right? Dang, listen. Just leave Lee though. Lee, oh, what she I'm just you, saying, son? like, she didn't but, am I, but am I lying? But leave her alone. But am yeah. I lying? Leave her alone. No, she don't think about actually, you. Am I lying, though? But leave her alone. Can but we watch the next episode? Absolutely. So we're going to do our WWE recap, which this week was what? No, leave me alone. Oh, please. You know what I'm saying? Sit down. So our um, WWE recap this week is our superstar shake up. <laughs> And was it a goddamn shake up it was? So we're gonna start. Big dick status. Okay, this has to stop. Like, we are not like, I feel uncomfortable. Like, we're not like, we not, no. We gotta find something neutral, guys. Okay? So think about it. You know, when I mentioned ladies, I said big V status. No, that's even worse. Like, who's talking about big vaginas? Like, no man wants to fuck a big ass vagina. Like, fat pussy. Wow. But is the vagina big? No. <laughs> fat pussy. So fast. you want so you, you want exactly. you want you a fat, fat vagina versus a tight pussy? I have the fat pussy. I didn't say that though. <laughs> I said So let's say would you want tight beat status. No. So I'm gonna let y'all big dick status. I'm gonna let That's y'all it. Okay, That's but without it. That because it makes you, you know what it makes you think of? It makes you think of horses. What? What? Why are you looking at horse dick? Horse dick. That's, see, that's, that's why I horse said that's what it makes me think of. So I'm just like, stop. Like, it's so gross. You see, you started this. I you did it because you guys are goddamn. But now, happy you put idea, horse dick status. Big dick status. I'd rather horse dick, actually. But. What? What? Mm. Because it just makes you uncomfortable. Like you're, like you're my best friend, and then you're his brother, and then now we're talking about dicks, and you're you the only friends. Dad, like, yeah, we're friends. But you didn't say that. Oh, oh my God! Yeah. Oh, Lord, now we gonna get. Now we all right. So let's go move on the road before we all get emotional and say, "But I love you, and you, we are friends." So don't, do not think about that. But not like Jesse. Don't touch me because she's watching. 
<laughs> so let's see what the curves, right? What curve? Joined back. She joined back. Welcome back, Jess. Girl, don't worry. He won't touch me again. I promise. <laughs> All right. Oh, so, fat pussy skinny, skinny excuse me. Said fat pussy kid. Actually, Ness, you have no business talking about pussy right now. Yeah, you got a whole like, yeah, 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 a whole because situation. Because you got an entire pregnant person, okay? Damn. So figure out why she's still mad at you. I want to know. Dang, damn. Wow, you why know. Business out there? Wow. Because if it's out in the internet, it's fair game. No, it's not. Yes, it is. You're not in our group chat, so you don't know. Exactly. Oh, that's group chat. That's, 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 that's on the internet. But we're all, wow. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about Raw. Let's we talk just talked about it from the earlier segment. Let's talk about Raw. It doesn't matter. So... What you guys are going to do, both of you are going to recap your thoughts on Raw. And then basically, I'm going to give you guys four superstars that have been traded to Raw each. And I want your opinions on those particular superstars that I give you guys, okay? So I'll start off with Mr. Black. Let me know your thoughts on Raw this week. And then we'll go to Star Wars, and then I'll give you guys four different superstars that I want you guys to just kind of divvy up and let me know what are your thoughts on them moving to Raw. So Mr. Black, what's up? Yo. What did you Raw? Bro, it was real good. You it know, not real three hours good. Of good shit. It was, it, was, it was solid. I was sick that day too. Oh, I was oh, in the shivering. Oh, oh man, shit fire. <laughs> it was fire. Let's start off real quick. I gotta give shout out to Jinder Mahal. No, what were you about to say? Jinder Mahal opened Monday Night Raw. Like, let's let's leave that on the table. Like, people will shit on Jinder all they want, but he opened Monday Night Raw. Jinder Mahal with the excellence, continue improving his ring work and promo skills. You know, I was watching. It wasn't him when he was wrestling um, Sinsuke. It was actually Sinsuke. Because Sinsuke was not holding his own because Sinsuke doesn't punch people. He kicks people. So the style didn't match very well. When I watch other Jinder Mahal matches from that, from that period till now, I'm looking like, yo, he's definitely improving each and every week. But everybody gave him a slap. That match with him and Jeff Hardy, it was a good match. It was fire. It was very good, very solid. Yo, I'm sitting here right now. Yo, I'm a gender fan. You know, I'm a gender head. For now on, that's my guy. You know, I'm about to get a gender Mahal flag and everything, a shirt. Well, we that's my flag. guy. We should get like a rug, you know, like a small rug. Oh my table. gosh, that's low key racist. It's not. <laughs> Shorty said a rug. I'm not getting a rug because it might have a ladder. No. So that's racist. Nigga, that's racist. That's actually racist. But okay, continue. Solid. Solid. Great. Um, another honorable mention was the men's TV segment with Sammy on Cam Cam Owens. Great segment. That was great. The Woken. And the um, Bray Wyatt, oh, solid match. And the entrance how it match well together. Oh my gosh. Wow. My son Dolph come out with Drew McIntyre. Solid. Solid. Samoa and Joe talking trash, solid. Um, Nanny Rose match, mm, that was a downside about it. Overall, it was great. See my son Bobby Lashley getting some licks in. Good, but he's still missing his finisher, the Dominator. I'm waiting for that. Yeah, I'm legit trying to figure out what his finisher is for the past week. And I'm waiting for that. So they probably, they, you know, overall, oh. Amber Moon versus Mickey James? And Mickey selling the shit out oh, of Oh my. Way. What did I realize about that? Mickey James and Amber Moon have very similar body types. And I didn't realize until the, when it was going out of the ring, like, yo, they can have excellent magic. And just put them together in the right program. Overall, Raw was great. What's up? Yeah. All right, so Wilkins, what are your thoughts on Raw? Raw with big dick stats. Mm -hmm. Lord. Across the board, B. So, Jeff Hardy and, and Jinder was, was great, whatever. Now, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Miss CD, that was classic. Classic it was. storytelling. It was. Did not Sami Zayn look like Santa Claus when he put on a glass? Everyone said the same thing. But it was the fact that I don't think, and, and I love acting, and I love television, I love the storytelling. It was the little things he was fucking doing during that promo. Like putting on the glasses, shaking everything up, reading that paper. Like it was such phenomenal storytelling on that shit. It was the little detail that they put in. And I really thought for a moment it was about to become a stable. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. We're having our first like mega stable for so long. I was so yep. fucking hyped. And then 
It went down and when Kurt was yeah. like, we're going to smack that. But we all by knew yourself. that was going to happen. We, we knew it. But I didn't know that he was going to go by himself. I didn't know he was going to go by himself, but then it was a part of me was like, no, no, no. So much potential. So much potential. <laughs> yes. But it was so yeah, yeah, mad, buddy. good. Now, Amber Moon, Mickey James, once again, phenomenal match. And I really think they're gonna start. They're gonna push Moon. Oh yeah, yeah. they're really gonna give Moon a push. Yeah, they paired up with Nia Jax last week. Shout out, shout out to Nia, the Raw Women's Champion. Champion. They paired up with last week. They did a Mickey James match and put her over. Now, Dolph. Yes, we know it's Shawn Michaels. These all over again. Who cares? But it's a different vibe. It's a different vibe. It's a different era. Whatever. I love how they brought Titus O'Neil. Did that little thing like he had his car over, come on, join the team. Once again, storytelling being told. And it was, and you know what? Shout out to production. I always kudos WWE for the production because that camera, literally, it was on. It was on Ziggler. And then you just saw a fucking foot on the side of the goddamn TV screen. You're like, who the fuck is that? And then they panned right into Drew McIntyre. I said, yeah. oh my God, this was such Phenom- a good it was, production. It was phenomenal work being done. Now, oh, shout out to Apollo for his um, last thing back. Yeah. Now, <laughs> what? <laughs> I have an issue that I keep saying this shit. They can really do something with Titus Worldwide. Yeah. They can really. But I don't think it's for Raw. It's not for Raw. It's for SmackDown. So yeah. put them on SmackDown. Like, I was upset hitting a drafter. Yeah, I really thought they were going to go to SmackDown. Because what I'm telling you, give them an office. Have them really do some cool stuff. APA style. APA style. Give them an office. Like, him coming out. Like, cut some promos. They All right. They don't have to wrestle. Give them that Fandango type of, type, type of treatment. Where they're doing scenes in the back. Little cut scenes in the back. That's how you get these guys over. Get the guy over every... And when, they, when they go in the ring, they still do house shows. So sharpen up the stuff. When they yeah. go in the ring, you're like, oh, I forgot the correct Like, imagine just a door. A and then style. you see... You see... Um, Titus. No, no, no. Apollo. What's her name? I don't know. Oh, uh, oh. Mm-hmm. I'm about, to, I'm about to say Brooke Hogan. No, Dana, Dana Brooke. Brooke. Yeah. Dana Brooke outside. Brooke Hogan. Um, at a table. Pretend to be secretary. But there's no, like, walls behind her. It's just a fucking oh, table. It's just a fucking door. Yeah. And somebody has to, like, like, you see somebody walking past the door, like, no, no, no. Knock on the door. <laughs> like, knock on the door. And then you open up and then you, like, hey, you came to see me, but his feet on, his feet on the chair, on the table. Like, worth that. And I'm mad they're not really working at that. It really bothers me. There's so much potential there. So much potential. Now, to move past that Dolph and, and Drew, I fucks with it. Yo, I marked out. We were watching it at Love Story. Shout out to Will and Love Story in Brooklyn. We were all watching Raw together and legit, we all marked the fuck out. Like, we were like, what the fuck is this? Now, Samoa, Roman, solid, solid, Ooh. amazing. Kind of make no sense now, but okay. it doesn't. It doesn't, but it just. It just I mean, the, fill cl- it, fill the it, cluster fill fuck it. of this greatest fakest Royal Rumble shit doesn't yeah. make sense. So it's yeah, okay. kind of no. Now Bobby Roode coming on board didn't really excite me. It didn't, but you see the potential. But it's much potential there. Like I feel like his entrance looked better on Raw. E- yeah, yeah. So let's rewind that. What we have here is somewhat of a new Raw. We have different little pieces in, in place. And I, t- and I was talking to some guys last night. I talked to you in the group chat. I told everybody the potential is there to go to the next level now. Both shows. The town's there. We're heavy as fuck up top, mid card, and even the lower Low card. card. Yeah. The potential is there. 100%. Not right, creative, yeah. has to just put in the work. Is Z Malenko still on um, the book of Asian? He's one of them, yeah. He's still on the squad because he was there for Hall of Fame. He was in. So, D. Do your job. One of the most underrated technical wrestlers, but do your job. Yeah. But all together, I thought the raw uh, after Mania was great. This one was better. I think it was the energy. Our yeah. energy for fucking because we really we did because you know from even Orlando's raw after Mania, like you knew who was coming. Yeah. Like in SmackDown, so like we knew Nakamura was going to debut that Tuesday after yeah. Mania. This raw at like we didn't have a clue. Like I mean, now. figured AOP because they lost at NXT Takeover, but just still like the whole like the un- the the uneasiness of not knowing was that element of surprise. Now we knew Bobby Lashley was gonna come. Shout out to um 
Wrestling Talk, the TMZ of wrestling, pro wrestling. Oh, Wrestle for, Talk. For putting me on about Bobby Lashley coming in on Monday. Because we posted before even he even showed up. Yeah. We already had it posted on the page. Spoiler alert. Thanks, guys. Yeah, we posted, posted on the page like three <laughs> hours before Raw came on. But we knew about and it. And we was an hour back, too. Yeah, so we, we knew about it. So, but this was an amazing Raw. And I watched every bit of it. And I was like, yo, the potential is here. It's great. They got great heels. They, they, they got great heels. They got great everything. You know like, what? There's so much potential. They put enough, I think, now different talents. So like you said, like they have like the, the heavy, they have the championship, they have the mid card, and even the lower card. They have enough talent to fill in those three hours and let it be what Monday was. Because yes. yeah. before the shakeup, you were just like, they would put everybody top heavy at the second hour because of other sporting shit. So they were trying to be strategic, but literally they have enough people on the squad that they can fill up every single hour. And now hour. just tell stories. Just tell yeah, stories. Yeah, like it'll be. Just and I think creative. that, and I think the fact that now they're going back to that one pay per view a month will help all the storytelling. And that was my thing because everybody was like, I don't know, it's gonna be hard, and they're gonna end up coming back together. I said no, like honestly, the number one thing that we're doing one pay per view is to help building a story because now you have enough time to do yeah. it. Yeah, and the good thing about that, like um, I thought about this in the shower. It's just like, mm-hmm. like the good thing about having mm-hmm. one paper. In the shower, yeah, dummy. Are you touching yourself? Whoa. <laughs> this guy. What thing about you having. Yes or no, people. Boy, I haven't touched myself if I want to wash my balls, guy. Dang. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So you have, to, you have to jerk off to wash your balls? Boy, I haven't <laughs> the soap rag, you know, get the thing, you know, gotta wipe it down there. I can't be like, squirt it. <sighs> That's so weird. You, so how do you. Okay, actually, we're not. You know what? I don't want to know. Nope. We're not gonna I don't want to know. Nope. I don't want to know. Yeah, actually, I, I was going to go know. there with you. No. But then I realized. No. No. I don't want to know. I don't. I don't want to know, nope. but I don't use rags. So use my hand. Okay. Didn't ask. That's why we didn't ask you. <laughs> Your hand. You really? know what, Leo? So, does you don't everybody get use stuff? rags or does everybody use their hand? No. Yeah. So, do you <laughs> use like body, like, do you use like those like loofah things or that do you use a rag? Dirty. Uh, or do you actually rags are re- actually rags are really bad for your skin? Yeah. Come on, you got sex. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, like because you're doing skin, this. Come on, come on, come on. But I I don't really use rags. I use a loof. So. But loof is like dirty. it's dirty. I feel like it, it's not dirty. I don't know. Like I'm trying to rag. Towels are dirty. That's why I use a robe. Yeah, but I dry. That too. Yeah. Okay, I'm kind of understanding you a little bit. Well, well, okay, ladies and gentlemen, do you use? A loofah, so it's called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a rag or oh, a just, just a oh, oh, yeah. or, or oxygen. Do you just use air? Nigga, <laughs> <laughs> you dirty. You dirty. You don't <laughs> air. I'm just you saying. Don't I mean, like, you got to give people options. No, I don't you care. Shower, you shower, you potato, turn around, you go. Oh, it could be. You, know, you don't know. And you turn around like, ooh, it's just too, too hot, too hot. No, we not that. Can we talk about SmackDown? Well, Anyways. actually, before that, I'm once again, I'm going to give you guys four superstars. No, 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 no. Let me finish my way. Okay. I was going to say this. I agree with you because now it makes SmackDown on must see TV. Absolutely. Think about it. It's back on Sunday, beginning. right? And a tag team match may not be on, can't able to make the show. A great tag team match right there. Knowing them, they'll give them enough time because they're not on a pay per view. So it makes must see TV before the pay per view, a little bit after. All right. Um, Leo, up, you were about me? to say something before I. Mark and Mark 316 says Who's handshake that? to the balls. Handshake to the balls? <laughs> Fuck is that? <laughs> he, just put the, he just put the water? Yeah. Handshake to the balls. Yeah. yeah. And Wait, who is that? He said his name is Mark and Mark. Mark is wild. Mark is a wild. Who are you? He, he's who on Instagram. That? He's an Instagram follower. He, he wild. Mark is a wild boy, son. Is Mark he from is, here? I don't know. Mark, where are you from? Oh. Sorry, answer that while I give these once again. Those that are viewing, um, listen to the four superstars. I'm going to give um, these two gentlemen and let us know your thoughts on their, what is their move going to be on Raw? So I'll start over Mr. Black. So I'm going to give you Kevin Owens, Baron Corbin, Chad Gable, mm. and your guy, Zack Ryder. So each of them, let me know highs and lows. What do you, what do you think they're going to do on Raw? <laughs> Kim Owens, great, cool. Um, Baron Corbin, this is a great restart for him. Because even leading up to the draft, he was having solid matches. Solid matches. He had actually a great match with Sinsuke Nakamura, surprisingly. Overall, great move, great reset. Cool. Great body shape. Um, I don't know this. You do. You can look at him and just say, nigga, that's a weird shape. Hell yeah, you know. Yeah, you know. All right. Yeah, smart. 
Um, my son Chad Gable. Up in the air with that one because you don't know really? how America Alpha could move forward from after this. You don't know. They're going to wrestle each other. Like, they're course. not going to get back together. But I don't know how they're going to progress. He might be the Mario Gennady of the group. I'm not too sure. I don't put that on him. I hope so it's not. But it definitely it's not. The um, Zach, Zach Ryder, I, I, I listened to a Cody interview. And Zach Ryder is a scary cat. Because the interview with Cody, he was talking about Zach Ryder like, oh, I think to have, like, they were trying to do a podcast together by the amusement parks. So, what? yo, think about it, like, because, know. like, them two love amusement parks, like, um, amusement parks. So they go to different ones and talk about it on a podcast. Cool. Son said, I got ask Triple H if, you know, you could do it with me. And you're just like, boy, it's your thing. Well, no, with anything with the superstars, they have to get approval to do certain, like, to do certain things outside of WWE. But here's the thing. He said he had asked if it's okay with him. But another person wanted to do it with, it wasn't a problem. He had asked Triple H if it was him. And, that, and another well, thing, yeah. and like, and back in the day, I realized he was on Talk is Jericho. And he said, like, why would he push you? Well, I don't know. And then I put two together. Zach Ryder, well, Zach Ryder is a scaredy cat, and he's still in the mindset that he got to bulk up to be on television. I mean, there's truth in that. I mean, just look at AJ. AJ at the top of the car. But AJ, look, AJ's a very different animal. Right, but look at Kevin Owens, top of the car. And, but Kevin Owens low-key lost a little bit of weight. Right, too. of course, of course. You know, you know, you know, Sami Zayn, not the biggest guy. Uh, you know, the list goes know. on. Fuck but it just showed that Zach about. Ryder... That's still my guy. Like, if I see him in the street, yo, boy, yo, what up? I'm trying to chill, though. You better keep that you same know? energy if you see Zack Ryder. Let me finish. I'm going to say what up to this side third, but I'm going to be like, Zack, son, I'm so rooting for you. But, boy, you got to want this ass also, son. You know, I'll probably hug him like, yo, you got this. Son, yeah, I believe in him. Yeah. You know, I kiss the forehead, like, you know? You know, he's tall than you, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you want to have to bend down? <laughs> what? This is gay, Y'all always talking about hard dicks. So who's really the gay one? <laughs> All right, so we'll get, I'm gonna give you Drew McIntyre, Mojo Riley, oh. Breezango, and Natalia. What do you think these four will do on Raw? Drew McIntyre is gonna become a star. Obviously, next. They put him with Dolph because it's the right thing to do. Dolph gets put over and also helps Drew McIntyre elevate even more. Mm -hmm. This is Drew McIntyre's second time around yeah. with WWE, and he knows he what to do now. And him pairing with Dolph, Dolph's gonna make him look great. And Dolph is gonna teach him the the mic skills that he the mic skills that he needs, and also the backstage politics that he mm -hmm. needs to do. Now. You said Mojo, Mojo Riley. Mm -hmm. oh. He's gonna be popping. Mojo is gonna be that guy. Mojo has an it factor that I feel like no one understands. N Mojo is gonna be that guy. I think they had to put all the tools together. He, well, he's yeah. gonna put them together because he's. I see Mojo feeling to be the top. Like you see in his eyes. You see in his eyes. Yeah. His wanting to be that guy in WWE is so evident in him. Like, it's burning inside him. You can look at it inside like, yo, I want to be the top guy. I feel like he has the energy of Rhino. He, no. no. No, no, let me finish. <laughs> I mean, that energy, I like, how the, I, Rhino just come out. Not no, that. not it's that. No, it's a different. No, I mean, like, how he has that control. intensity, like. Yeah, it's there, but it's control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to be the top guy. Yeah, he's going to be the top guy. Natalia, Natalia's done. Natalia's job is to put over the other chicks. Cut these checks. Get a few title shots, win them sometimes. No, wait, ain't what you win no time. No, she ain't win that. It's to put over other women, maybe have a good match here and there. Have a good I've always told you, I love Natty. She's good. I fucking I think Natty's gorgeous. But she's the girl next door. Wow. She's a girl she's you, like an afterthought. It's she's sad. an afterthought. You marry her after everything's done said and go done. I mean, look at her marriage. It is that's like you go to her because you need something. And the reason she's a veteran, she's amazing in the ring, a little boring on the mic. She got a lot better, and she I did. think it was because Lana OD'd her on, to on Total Divas. Yeah, but at the end of the day, Natty is there to put everybody else over and teach the, girl, the girls how to, how, to, how to be a diva or a woman's wrestler. That's her job. Next. All right, that was it. Um, those that are watching on oh. the Instagram live before Leo gives me some words, those that are watching, so who is your top superstar that actually got traded? Too raw, and what do you think their move is gonna be? So, Leo, what are some of the people saying? Um, Skinny Kravitz said, "Fuck Mojo." Fuck you, Ness. 
entrepreneurial that 360 so yeah. my issue with the WWE is that black stars have to work three times harder as the whites okay now this is a conversation I had that's kind of like Sean. that's kind of a little off topic but and okay <laughs> very <laughs> off topic dang, like a cigarette straight black sure. panther you know he, he went straight like okay hey. and he wants a black panther yeah we yeah. talking about the Avengers we talking about black mm. panther let's focus on that's the black panther the Marvel black panther we're talking about black panther black panther like yeah. <laughs> like straight up. Let's right. focus, please. He also said, like, why are truth being on SmackDown is topical? Because it's comical? Because it is. Because he make jokes. We're not talking about SmackDown just yet, but because he is comical. Like mm-hmm. next person. And Skippy Kravitz also said it's Vince Man's favorites against either each other with Drew and Roman. All right. Okay. Oh, All right. Cool. All right. So we're gonna move on to SmackDown. Um, and once again, those that are watching on the live feed, you can keep on letting us know who do you think. Um, actually, who do you think got the better hand of the shakeup? Was it Raw? Or was it SmackDown? And these two gentlemen will answer that at the end of our break before our segment. So, all right. So as we continue this superstar shakeup, let's talk about SmackDown. So, Sir Wilkins, what were your thoughts on this jam-packed two hours of SmackDown this week? Once again, quality. Quality, yeah. It was big dick status. Oh Across the board. Like, quality, quality match. My only thing I liked was Naomi. Yo, that shit. I kind of like that storyline. No, fuck out of here. That blue minds. Like, damsel in distress type of shit. Like, don't, don't hurt him. Like, the fuck? Bitch. Yeah, I, didn't, I, didn't really I like that because, like, yeah, I was going to like, so song to the thing, you know? Now you came out like, oh, come on, chill, guy. They look at him like, all right, we'll nah, chill. Nah, nah. Nah, that shit look weak me, as fuck. You look weak. You look weak, I like it. I like it. You, Bro, like you know what it is? You know what it is? I'm a type of person, like, however you get extra screen, uh, some, some screen time, do it. That's how type of person I am. She don't need to do that to no, get no, no, TV I get that, time. But, like, I just see that as that way. Everyone got to eat. She was going to eat regardless of all her fucking screaming for her husband. True. Go ahead. Whatever. Um, Rusev. Come on. Yo, oh. when I tell you everywhere <laughs> we went Happy New Rusev Orleans. Day. Happy Rusev Day, everyone. Everywhere we went to New Orleans, every show. Happy Rusev Day. They have 78,000 people in a Superdome. Shit. Happy Rusev Day. That shit is unreal. He's over. He is so Like, over. I don't understand. Like, and, and I still love the fact that Ada English intro- introduces him. And it's even to the detail. The fucking mic says Happy Rusev Day. Yeah. Well, you have to. Shit is crazy. Now, Samoa Joe coming on really surprised me. Yeah. That was like a curve. I was like, oh! Yeah. I was oh. in my house. I almost flipped the fucking... Yeah, I was that like, was really surprising. Oh, that was on point. Carmella? Okay. Yeah, her champ is dope, and I really don't I, care what anyone you, says. I see, I see you, Ma. I see you, Ma, gentrifying hip-hop culture on SmackDown. I see you, but you're doing your thing. That's for Entrepreneur 360, since you want to get all political. So I throw you out there. I definitely text message him just now, like, so political on the IG, though. Huh? It was fine. I want to fuck with him, so I want to have a nice little talk with him. I'm about the culture, B. But... And he look like y'all. He bald headed just like you. Oh, man. Oh, if you have a nice little conversation, come through. He got a beard? No. He has, like... No, he doesn't have all a beard. Right. Come through. We talk. Charlotte. Eh, eh, Oscar coming on. That was great. That was great. I'm a waste of space because we basically that she's gonna. No, no, no. Because we kind of knew she was gonna go and smack that anyway. Yeah, but it, it just elevates their, it their feud. Gives that element. It, it, let's keep let's keep working that feud. It's like it's, I'm gonna work with you, but don't bitch don't think. Yeah, I no, 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 it's good. But also Oscar was like, okay, we expected that. Anywho, but it was still good though. It was still good. But your girl Becky Lynch's new wardrobe, that should have charged. So like she look weird. That like you can't dress with Wallace. Oh, oh. There's a real matter. It's weird. Big Cass coming back. I like it because I'm interested. Poor man test? Sure. Test. Yeah. Test. This is for the test. Oh, test. Lord. Test. This is for the test. That's all I want to with the pants? What the, 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 what Hands out. We'll see what's gonna happen. And I'm enjoying the potential. SmackDown potential 
was like, okay, this big dick might do something. Mm. Raw, we knew the big dick was gonna do mm. something. Pause. Right. I'm glad you did. Okay. Whoa. So, that, right. that was my Mr. Black, what were your thoughts on SmackDown Live this week? And you'd be very proud to know that because SmackDown was so good, it made me want to watch 205 Live. He's gonna make, make nigga cry. That's how good. And, I, and I even stayed. So, like, Pete and all of them, they had left because they wanted the barbecue um, at the house the last night. But me and Ronaldo stayed for 205 Live. We were, in, we were in New Orleans and we stayed and we watched it. But okay. SmackDown this week, mainly. Are we having a barbecue show for 4th of July? Maybe not because I want to go see Sam Smith in Philly. So we'll talk about it. We'll figure oh, it out. Man. Oh, really? Good. Sam Smith. Oh, okay. Oh, really? $50 tickets in Philly. Oh, why not? Why not? Really? Yeah. You want to go? I Think about it. Overall, it's kind of shows, so it's kinda weird, but no, it made sense. Overall, it was good. It was great, good. What was the highlight of SmackDown for you? Shout the Benjamin, get on the mic, talking, had a great match with you. Forget how good he was. Something is a is a, a special. He's yo, yeah. he's so he's big. He's great. He's great. His age, he's good. But you know one thing that Sorry. I said to realize? When I met him at um, fucking Warriors of Wrestling at Brandon show, yeah. that one- uh, Shout out to Warriors of Wrestling. Like two years ago, I was just like, oh my God, he's so- He was good, he was good. Was good. You know, you know, hashtag black excellence. Hashtag black excellence. One hot take I want to take, and somebody actually pointed it out. Shout out to the Mixed Tag Podcast. That's what the podcast is? Yeah. Called? Shout out to the Mixed Tag Podcast. I listen to them, you know, they have really solid. Hashtag black excellence, hashtag, um, Haiti pride this out there. We don't look alike. We kind of do though. Yeah, you know, don't look alike at all. Like, 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 I let cousin. you rock out. But he yeah, like, he passed my cousin like real distance. Anyways, Charlotte Flair. She said something, and I realized Charlotte Flair don't have good matches outside of a handful of women. Natalia, good match. Sasha, good match. Bailey, good match. Becky Lynch, good match. Ruby Riot, good match. Outside of those five, she never had good matches with no one else. Oh, hey, but she hasn't really had matches. Time you named all the people she had matches with. Time out, time out, time out, time out. I <laughs> said, hold up, hold up. I fuck with you. But let me finish, let me finish. Let me finish my point. Let me finish my point. She has, outside <laughs> of those people, those matches be good. But everyone else, it just be Wait, okay. Wait, everyone else? Like, everybody, on, 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 on everyone else besides Ruby Riot, the other two people she wrestles be like, okay. Oh, Logan. Yeah. Now. And when she fought, um, what's that? And Liv Morgan. The other people she fought, it was just like, it was Ooh. just okay. You know, when she fought um, Alexa Bliss, that was okay match. It wasn't spectacular. I just feel like how that, because she had the flair last name, she gets the extra push. And you really think about it, she's getting a Roman push. Cause did she really have to defeat Oscar? What's said that too? You know what? I feel like did she really need the Oscar to take away Oscar get a victory? Did she really need that? Cause she's ready. The only one that had the NXT title, the the, the Divas title, the Raw's title, and the SmackDown. Does she really need that extra layer to that? I mean, as an Oscar fan, no, I'm gonna say that. But I mean, when you look oh, about Oscar. it. And when you think, can you cut it out? When you think about it, New Orleans, now I think New Orleans is set as the city where the streaks are broken. And I think that was- Shout out to everybody think, that was at the bar with a shout out to Lala. I think that was the route that they went with. They were like, you know what? Let, let, this is where streaks die. Let, this is where streaks are, are, are meant to be buried. And then on top of that, let's move her to a brand where she can start fresh and start over. But that's so, what you, But I just feel like Charlotte, she, She's a great competitor, but I never saw any wild matches outside those women's. Okay, I'm gonna let you go for two seconds, and then we're gonna do four superstars that are now on SmackDown for each of you guys. So go ahead. Before you mentioned you... five motherfuckers. <laughs> you mentioned five motherfuckers, and then you mentioned three motherfuckers she didn't have a bad match with. I said hold she hold just had the K matches. Hold the, I don't talk. I let matches. you talk. I let you talk. You know, AJ, the women's division. You know, AJ, the women's division. I let you talk. Hey, 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 I work good on that. Don't talk. I let you talk. She ain't AJ, the women's division. I let you Wait, talk. Wait, you said she's not AJ? The women's division had matches with everybody. Listen, I let you talk. Roman had matches with good with a lot of good people. Uh, Can I speak? Can I speak? Seth, a lot of people had good matches you, you with. You still talking. You still talking. What's Stop about talking like you do. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Go ahead. Charlotte Flair 
I love how people love to mention her dad. Love to mention her dad. There's a lot of third generation people who's gotten pushes and didn't do shit. You're right. So let's do, let's, let's just talk about Charlotte herself. Rocked out NXT. Yes or no? Yes. Classic matches with the same people I mentioned. Oh, hold up. But those are only the people that are in the division. Those are the top people in the division. Because <laughs> like, you're going to go get the top people in the division. So, example, AJ Styles had a great match with Chad Gable. AJ Styles had a great match with... Chad Gable ain't nice? Let me finish. No, no, let me finish. Let me finish, because you're cutting me off. You're cutting me off. I'll let you talk. Oh, Lord. Now, I'm going to talk. This is what I came back to. Go you, are, are you ready? I'm ready. To hear me speak? Yeah. Are you, you going to cut me off? Are no. you finished or are you done? Put some honest. respect on my black name, Mr. Black. Yeah, I got the same last name, though. But my, my first name. Okay. Sir motherfucking Wilkins. Go ahead. Okay. AJ Styles is better than Charlotte. You're talking about somebody who's been around the world. Wrestled in New Japan, was a top guy in TNA, is a god in New Japan wrestling. Shout out to Lebanese physique for, for schooling me about New Japan culture even more. Thank you, Lebanese, Lebanese physique. But AJ Styles is ahead of the curve when it comes to Charlotte. Way better. You can't compare the two. I understand that. Oh, hold up. I'm not done. You're interrupting me again. I'm agreeing with you, though. No, 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 no. Don't say nothing. I'm talking now. I'm you don't have to be rude about it. No, 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 no. I'm agreeing with you. No. You're going to let me finish. I am. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> now, I mean, you mentioned you know. five people. That's basically the whole women's division. Right. <laughs> okay. She hasn't had every match as a fucking five-star match, and it hasn't been great. She got to serve her body, bro. But those other five people you mentioned, it's basically her whole catalog. Are you gonna mention some bullshit matches? Disrespect the queen? The queen is not your Oh no, you cut me off! You cut me off again! I'm not done! I need my dramatic pause! Alright, I'm gonna need you to wrap it up. Okay. I'm gonna wrap it up right now! Okay, great. Don't disrespect the queen! Time out. You still got stitches in your mouth? No, it's like I'm talking a lot and I'm mad. Oh, okay. I was just like, hey, so you all right? But I mean. Disrespecting the queen like that. All right, so we're gonna- We can move on. Oh, oh, you good now? The paper's all crumpled up because yeah. you made me mad. Well, that was your dumb ass fault. You should have ripped up the paper I worked hard on. All right, so like I said, those that are watching on the live feed, Sorry so much for this tangent, but this is how it always oh, goes. Man. So I'm gonna once again give the boys four new superstars that are now on SmackDown. They're gonna tell me Got me how they oh, y'all just naturally born sweaters anyway. So they're gonna tell me what are they gonna do on SmackDown. So I'll start off with Sir Wilkins first now. So we have so I'm gonna give you Sanity, which is gonna be Eric Young, Alexander Wolf, and Killian Dane without Nikki Cross, which I'm really pissed about, but Neither here or there. So Sanity, that's coming up. Samoa Joe, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, and Cien Almas with Selena Vega. Okay. Sanity, I'm excited about this. Sure? It's a stable. You know I talked about stables I earlier. That. I'm a little mad my gasoline smelling, cigarette smelling, so looking so dirty. Nikki Cross beauty is not up. Yeah. Not but it's the same thing they did with Carmella. Like they did into a cast first and they left her at NXT for like a few more months and then she got pulled. I think they're trying to split them apart and get her like really. Yeah, like really Nikki could be on her own. Yeah, yeah she could be on her own. But I love what she did with, the, with them. Yeah. So there's potential. Yeah. Once again, we're going on potential. This is like, and I love how WWE does this, it's like the draft. Mm hmm. We're moving things around and we're drafting people in, especially from NXT, off of potential. Yeah. They did phenomenal NXT. This is college. NXT is college. Yeah. So yeah. with them, I look at them like, okay, they just so good at NXT. They sold me. They sold me NXT. Now sell me on the big stage. Please. Yeah. Like I'm begging for them to have um, an impact. I really want this. The engines alone are going to pop people. Yeah. Now, I'm going to the next CN. Cien Almas. Oh, so Cien Almas. And Zelina Vega. Wow. Here we go. 
There's only two types of women I love in the world. My ebony queens Damage. and my Spanish hotties. Ooh. I won't say my Goya girls, but that's that bad races. Mad races. That's bad races. Oh. I don't I'm, I'm, I'm borderline married to an ebony queen, but I love me some Vega. I love her. What was that girl? Oh, Channel 7, um, Yolanda Vega. I should people swear by her because they say that they, she gives us good luck. Every time you play Lotto. Because she's, he has a lot of. Like my mother be so high. Oh, oh, Yolanda Vega's on. And she wants good luck. Time. Every time. Well, that's anyway, lottery. We, we, we're going off subject. Yeah. CN is going to be a star. Solid, yeah, yeah, yeah. She, he's low key. Can I the McMahon family? I heard, yeah. I don't know really? how. Well, because, well, his family is very, very rich in the Mexican wrestling world. Like, he has lucha oh, background. Man. So, like, every time, like, if you watch NXT TakeOver, he comes out with a lucha mask. Yeah. And, like, even the, the TakeOver before that, he came out with, like, the band and things mm-hmm. like that to pay homage to his lucha, like, roots. Like, he has wrestling. He's he's a part of a wrestling family. He's solid, yeah. you know. But he's phenomenal on the ring. He's, he's gotten so much better. And then adding Vega to, to, to the mix. Yeah. Because he the, can't talk. Was the best thing That's ever. good. That's good. What now. Up? He's doing something. Top mid car guy. I think he'll be a top mid, not um, uh, a, a heavyweight champion, but world champion, I mean, top mid car. It's kind of like what RVD and Booker T was like. If you see them, let me check but okay. That Booker makes T. sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. But they'll be put over over most mid card people. Yes. He's like, he, he's like the Miz. Yes. He'll get to that level, yeah. He's coming out of college, which is NXT, yeah. and he'll be an all star. Yeah, because CN was only there for a year. Yeah, a solid he'll, year. He'll be, a, he'll be an all star. He usually did a one and done in NXT. Yeah. Yeah. He'll be an all star in the WWE. So universe. what's the next person? Now, who do we say? Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. Yeah, they need to refresh character. They, they, they need to refresh. And you know what? I'm not mad that they're on there, but. I, the tag team division in SmackDown is very good already. Yeah. So them in the mix will kind of boost them up a little bit. Yeah. Because they need that. Like them against Sanity is going to be dope. Yes. And like I said, stable, bullet club, something. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's do something. Oh, shit. And who was the fourth person we said? Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe's a star. Yeah, solid. We, we just know that. AJ Styles, Shinsuke Nakamura matches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you did you not feel like you were watching TNA 2.0? No, of course. You know, like, TNA 2.0, SmackDown 6 2.0. Yeah, got that feel from it. <laughs> we're, yeah. we're, we're good. They're we're good. good. We're All good. right. So for you, I have Big Cass, The Bar, mm. Oscar, and Jeff Hardy. Oh, man. Solid picks. The only person I'm still stepping about is Big Cass because he don't have the mouthpiece of Enzo. But his, mm. but yo, but his theme song, they they literally scrapped everything. They were like, yo, let's go to the drum board. His now new theme song is pretty dope. I didn't get to so. really hear it, but overall, though, only person I'm still kind of skeptical about is Big Cass. The bar, you go anyway with them. You can split them up a little bit. They could become the upper mid card. They could be in many different matches. Cool. Third person you said? Oscar. Come on. Next. You can talk pick. about I mean, great pick. This is the reason why you're talking first about First round draft Yeah, first round, baby. Mm. You feel me? Jeff Hardy. Come on, man. I was surprised that, he, that they swapped Yeah, him. I was surprised. I really thought Seth was going to go yes, to SmackDown. Yeah. So. Um, what I'm hearing is that Jeff is in a major push coming up. Yeah. And I feel like it brings me back shades of when he ruled that SmackDown for a while. Yo, when him and Benjamin were fighting, I was like, am I watching SmackDown 2003? Yeah. Like, it was good, solid. Like, yeah, all these picks are great pickup for both brands. Even my son, Ron Killens, a.k.a. R-Truth, great pickup, great little comedy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's about that. Yo, he just sent me the illest, like, paragraph on the entire thing, and I was just like, I'll read it later. Read it right now. No, it's, like, really. Like, it. No, it's, like, real. Like, it's real. I think it's the same thing he posted on the live. Read it, son. I'll read it. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying, love, uh, because they broadcast our troops to be on SmackDown, crew like it matter. He a great WWE star, but yet they got him looking like dancing fool. I'm tired of a black WWE superstars have changed who they are to get ahead in the business. But are they really changing who they are? Are they, yeah, are they on, I'm, I'm they not are. done. This is like half of the time. Yeah, like wow. it's like uh, Naomi. When you're from being respected to being a dancing fool, but right along with dancer. New Day, and the Uso had to change it up, who they are was on to, no, 
the Use had to change up who they are, <laughs> who they was, to some penitentiary bullshit no. with the likes of John Cena and Seth Rollins can do who they are and the superstars contender. Wait, so my question to you is, so what was it about Cena when he was rapping? Because honestly, the reason why they let Cena do the gimmick of him rapping was because he was doing it backstage already. Like, that was him. And Stephanie pushed for him. Period. And um, And hold up, hold up. To to, to his defense, he said they're letting people be who they are. Yeah. And he said that black wrestlers don't let them be who they are. But they are. Like, Naomi, it, her background is dance. Yes. She's a dancer. And she was truth, an Orlando Magic truth, dancer. Um, he used to dance for Tupac. Like, they're letting them so bring it's not like of that. He just came out of nowhere. You, you, know know. What it, you know what it is? It's, it's just the whole, I think it's the black image of the shuck and jive type shit. It's the chuck and That's jive really type shit. And sometimes, us people are too woke. They can't control the woke powers like I can. Oh, oh Lord. So these woke powers that I've been blessed with, oh. that I can go from different levels, oh. I control it. Oh. And I understand. And I Preach have, these devils. Wow. Wow, before I leave. You know, in hold up, I'm not done preaching oh, for a second. So my woke powers, I'm able to see the colonizers, oh. these white devils that's out there. White devils. These mayonnaise colored evil doers. Mm. Wow. Trying to hurt us. Thanks to all the mayonnaise color people that are watching her right now. The, the, they mayonnaise color. They're, 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 they're good people. They're good people. They're okay. white. I just want you they're guys. They're supporting us. But they're I not just, crackers. But they're I, not cracker ass crackers. Ooh, I just want you guys to just acknowledge that. Thank you. Yeah, there's a difference. There's a difference. But I wanted you guys to people. acknowledge there's, that there's, difference. There's a difference between white people and white devils. Yeah, they can crackers or like black people and niggas. <laughs> yes. Preach my black brother. Literally, his black Preach. brother. Preach. Preach. Well, we can move on. Thank you. All right. So, last question before we move on to Raw recap. And those that are watching on live feed, who do you think won the Superstar Shake Up? Was it Raw or was it SmackDown? Mr. Black, who won the Shake Up? SmackDown. I thought it was even. Really? Okay. I thought it was even. I think SmackDown by the edge because. They got Oscar? They got Joe. No, because I just feel like how that's. They got Joe and CN. Yeah. And the fact that they brought CN up there, it gave me shades of Eddie. We'll see. All right, guys, we're watching on the live feed. Who do you think won the shakeup? Who are you? What brand are you going to be more excited about to watch now? Is it going to be Raw? Or is it going to be SmackDown? So you guys can um, type in your answers as we go into our next segment, which is rivalries. So, what are your dream matches this week? Oh, two cold scorpion versus R Truth in a dance competition. Wow. Okay, simple. Chuck it and Josh. Chuck and Josh. Chuck it and Josh. Chuck it and motherfucking Josh. <laughs> Are you really? Yo, that was really. It. That's all he came up with. But you know what? I'm gonna go with you on something else. Okay, what is your? It's gonna be CM versus Eddie Guerrero ladder match. Okay. Why gotta be a ladder match? Because like all strategies good at fixing stuff. Wow, wouldn't they just really agile people and they get a ladder matches what? down? What? what? What are you talking about, son? I was just saying. You turn everything into a racial situation. I need you to relax. I'm just saying, you know, you make a big deal because say aren't you and and jiving? But so you say that fashion is just good at fixing stuff. So there'll be a lot of that's not what I said. WWE. Why can't it be like you know in like you know um because they're both athletes and because that's gonna be very very high spots. But that's what okay they both could dance. It's entertaining. Okay. But that's Chuck and John we were just talking that's about. What we were just, yeah. Okay. All right. Mine this week is actually War Games. So I had Usos and Roman Reigns and Nia Jax versus the Hart Foundation. So I had Owen, Brett, Jim Nyhart, mm. and Natalia in like War a Games. Couple times. No. It was, it was, first was mine. Second, it's four on four. So, can Tyson be special guy for He can be on the side with his fucking headphones and a cat, okay? All right, cool, cool. Long he's there. All right, so we are going to go to our next segment, uh, which is a brand new segment this week. You guys want to tell us about watching what this is? Big dick moment of the week. Oh, Lord. So, according to these gentlemen, um, each of us are going to say what our big moment of this week was. So, Big what? <laughs> big dick Our moment. big moment. And, well... I'm, I'm not about, about to be out here in these streets saying dick all the goddamn time. You just said it. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> like, it is very uncomfortable. I don't want to talk about dicks on TV. So, you know what? Simple as that. I'm going to use this topic. For our next segment, it's for the 
moment of the week. That makes it worse. Like, are you kidding me? Because the fans know. That's terrible. The fans know. At that, no, at that point, I'd rather you say dick. <laughs> I'm trying to work with you. That's a that's a very bad compromise. It's so oh, dirty. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's so good. No. It's so good. No, it does. It's a big dick moment of the movie because we all know a big dick means status. Oh my god. That's what it means. All right, so I'm gonna let. So wait till this is Legends Bar. Just do this. We know you're no, a fan. No. For the drama squad out there, when you see my brother, when you see me, or when you see Janelle, no. with the arms, with the no. full armor. No, that's so bad. Oh my god. All right. So what? What was? What was your moment of the week? That's your horrible fault. Yeah, Good, for Good for y'all. Good for y'all. When Mickey James, how she sold that clips. Okay. Best moment. All right. So okay. So what is your moment this week? Drew McIntyre with that big motherfucking mm-hmm. boot to the back of Titus. That shit came out of nowhere. Shout out to the camera angles. Cause I was like, oh, who is this? I was like, whoa, who did that and why? Um, my big moment of the week. No, 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 no. Let me say it for you. No, 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 I'm good. Um, oh God. Um, actually, it goes to 205 Live. Ooh. And it goes to them doing, I guess it was the Lucha Party thing they got going on with, versus a Damia Tamu and um, Tozawa. And they had a Texas tornado match. And honestly, I can't even remember the last time I've seen a Texas a tornado, tag team tornado match. I don't even that's, remember the last time I've seen no. that. So that right there, for those that have not seen yet, yeah, Trips, you know what you're doing. So for those that have not seen 205 Live, please go on the WWE Network and t- just check out that tag team match at the end of 205 Live. It was honestly the big moment of the week, I think, because not a lot of people probably have seen it, but it was really, really good. So we are coming to it in to our very interesting welcome back episode for me, uh, which is our list. So you made the list. So I'll start off with Black. Who made your list this week? Hmm. I don't know. It was such a good week. Five two months. I don't put a list. Oh, um, there's a lot of people I'm putting on potential list. So, um, nobody, because everything is good. Okay. What about you? <laughs> this guy. Wow. Mr. Black made the list. And okay. you know why he made the list. Why? Tell us all. So Tell me more. The other day, I was watching some YouTube videos. You know, I'm just researching what's going on in wrestling, blah, blah, blah. And Charmaine got the Donkey of the Week. Day, day. Donkey of the Day. I'm sorry. Donkey of the Day. I apologize. Charmaine got on Power 105. The Donkey of the Day on Taylor, Taylor Swift. Okay. The reason why, because Taylor Swift did a cover for Earth, Wind, and Fire. Earth, Wind, and Fire song called September. Yes. Love that song. My birthday month. Love okay. it. You got the Earth, Wind, and Fire version or the Taylor Swift version? That's the only version I know is fucking Earth, Wind, and Fire. Who gives a fuck about what Taylor Swift is fucking singing in September? So, the fuck? Oh you know. Oh, so wait. Hold this, on, this hold is on. Going. Let, let, let me finish. I see where this is going. So, on. I listened to the, you know, the video on YouTube and I'm laughing. I'm like, yo, Taylor Swift did a horrible job on this cup. Nice. It was trash. It was like she was using a banjo. There was no soul in it. Like, you mayonnaise colored motherfucker. Wow. Like, you you trash. I really, don't like, I really, I don't know why, but I really don't like Taylor Swift, really. And maybe why? I shouldn't be saying it. I don't know. Something about her rubbed me the wrong way. But you know, every nigga that she's been with, she know her. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what, what is it about mm-hmm. her. And, and I want to get to know her, maybe. Maybe I'll, I'll change my yeah, vision. Like, whole opinion of her, opinion of her. So, you know, him being my proud black brother, I sent him the video after, you know, we can share a laugh together. He's like, <laughs> he put a laugh out loud. He's like, yo, but real talk though, this Taylor Swift cover is fire. I said, excuse me? I knew where this was going. I said, excuse me, nigga? Yeah, let me look this up. This right was some now. soulless, trash yeah, I'm on YouTube. shit. I am on YouTube. Right? Trash. Tra- no soul, no love for the game of good. You hear this shit? I'm gonna tell you a story after the last. You hear this shit? You know what's crazy? I feel like if I don't mind the banjo, because I actually like country music, so I don't mind the banjo. But her singing it, no. Okay. After I was like, you know what? I take the L. I ain't gonna. I I I just start bumping it. But then at one point. 
I didn't stop listening to it. I'm going to tell you why. I felt like I was back in slavery time and like the master door tried to impress me by singing this song. I felt so suppressed listening to this. I was like, I can't listen to this no more. So I do deserve what? to be on the list. I don't know how Where did you go that with went that way. Because I just felt like like my ancestors is looking at me and like shaking yeah, my head. Yeah, because you fucking enjoy a Taylor Swift cover of Earth, Wind, and Fire that's fucking no soul in it. She meant to basically gentrify Earth, Wind, and Fire's greatest song and put a Starbucks a great, a fucking Whole Foods. And greatest month, by the way. She put a Starbucks in a Whole Foods. All right, action. all right, all right. Walking down the fucking street, sipping on her fucking latte, going to fucking yoga. I just disrespect. Feel, you're right. You're right. I deserve that. All right. I mean, once again, <laughs> that's you guys wait, are hilarious. Wait, your list. Motherfucking nature did. Mother nature goes on the list. God damn it. Because we had. I don't think you should say that about, about, about like mother nature. I am. That's what like, I'm You know, like you might mess with your body. So I want no beef with mother nature. Mother nature is fucking with all of us. No, 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 no. Mother nature, I want no static with you. Yo, but you she. Suffer. No, no, no. Yo, you mother nature has one. static with us because last weekend we get Friday. Friday was very Beautiful. nice. Sunny. It felt warm. You were excited about spring. You were like, yes. Saturday was hot as fuck. Like I had on, I had on a romper, I had on shorts. Yo, I was so, I, I was cute, I was good. I went to my friend's um, daughter's birthday party, then I went to my best friend's birthday, um, like late lunch, the early dinner thing. Like, yeah. And then after we left the restaurant, Break. it was cold as fuck. Like I was like, you should check the web app. What the, I did, relax. I can handle it. You I can wait. Sure. I can, first of all, I can. First of all, I check by the hour. <laughs> so there's no the hour. No, it's not the my. No, I'm not saying. I'm not. I'm okay. I'm just saying in general, like um, Mother Nature you don't tease us. No, I had a little. I had a little sweater. I'm I was fine. Cute. You're trying to cute. But I was cute. Thank you. But but you try to be cute. No, no. You you watch your phone, Watch your mouth. I didn't try to be Why cute. Why you try to put your, your, your hands to, to my lips? Because you know? I want you, you to be quiet. Here? No, no, because Jesse's watching it and I'm not trying to no, do that. Jesse's watching. This Kirk this Kirby. Kirby Jesse. Jesse. I ain't with the shit. She's a health teacher. She teaches some things. I, I can't so compete she with that. She'll put it on you. But <laughs> I will she, say. She got board of education, pussy. <laughs> 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 she got board of education pussy. That shit fire. That's right. benefits. That's benefits. That's, that's you know, she's all mad from work. Yeah. The kids, that's she really gonna put her split on the dick. <laughs> <laughs> How does every episode always feel like it is the most sexual thing everyone's always talking about? He has some more of education pussy. That's so great. Mother Nature's Kudos on your list. So Mother Nature is on my list because stop teasing us. Like, just give us, like, I, I went to New Orleans. I was in shorts every day. It was nice. It was 60 degrees, 70 degrees. Give us this warm weather that we deserve. Like, let us we be great. Deserve, and on that note, we're going to sign off. Thank you so much, guys, that are watching on the Instagram live feed. We appreciate, once again, every week you guys are tuning in Thanks. and watching. Thank you so much. Um, make sure that you join us on our Facebook group, the Job is Podcast group on Facebook. Get some conversations. If you have questions, concerns, or anything wrestling-related, put it in the group. We'll definitely, everyone, let's start a conversation. Um, this Friday is a historic day, it, besides it being 420, which is a national holiday probably for Leo and Mr. Black over here. Um, so the tourists said put you on the list. For what? Being sick. So it doesn't matter. Yeah, like if you're gonna put somebody it's on the list, you guys you better, you better explain. Can we, can we, can we? No, 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 no. What you said is join it. Let's end the show. All right, don't worry, I got it. So, once again, this Friday is a historic day. Um, at Darrell's Extreme Fitness, the debut of NYC Now You Create presents It Was All a Dream. So, shout outs to our boy Pete, um, Freddie, Marks, and the awesome, I'm awesome Ivy. Matt. Ivy, of course, too, and her crew. And Matt Awesome, they're all going to be there this Friday um, for their first show. Um, it's a new promotion. It's, you know, starting up. But once again, I am a firm believer. Always support those that support you. So definitely going to be there and showing love. So I hope you guys are doing the same. You can go on their Facebook um, event group and buy tickets. You can purchase tickets at the door. It will be more like the club. So make sure you purchase your tickets before Friday. Um, and then also, once again, we're going to keep reminding you guys of Battle Club Pros, May 26th, all-female wrestling show, May the Clean Rain. We will be there. Jabba Tears Podcast is sponsoring. 
What? Talking was... about the young kids. They're like, grr, grr. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. At your age, boo. <laughs> <laughs> so always so. wanna. Every week we're gonna push and push you guys talking about Battle Club Pro because it's super important for us. Um, it's the first time we are actually sponsoring an indie show, so it is definitely something historic, and it's an all female women show. So as a female, road trip. Road trip because it's actually in Jersey, so okay. it's not too far. It's right across the river. So every week we're going, and once again, just keep pushing it. Uh, make sure you guys follow us on Twitter at Job of Tears. Follow also, us. Don't forget, um, Grace um, Royal Rumble viewing party oh. next Friday. So if anyone wants to play hooky with the boys, so I we'll be here. At work. We'll be here eating um, the wings. They <laughs> and when you see us, they will be. No oh, lord, that's what I'm when saying. When you see a Job of Tear. Part of the Jabba squad out on the street. Wait, excuse me? But, huh? What you said? We call this the Jabba squad. Yeah. Oh, I thought you said something else. Okay. Oh. When you see a Jabba out who's part of the Jabba squad, put the forearm in the air and slap it three times. Yo, I feel like this is like um, fucking the guy that goes, we the people. That's exactly oh, what oh, 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 Jack Swagger. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Remember, put the forearm in the air, slap it three times. One, two, three. So gross. But um, once again, the boys are going to be doing a little a midday viewing party of the Greatest World Rumble, um, 12 o'clock next Friday. Um, so make sure you um, check our all of our social media platforms for more information on that. And then also, once again, follow us on Instagram. Every week we go live before you tell me what he said. Um, every week we go live on our Instagram page at the Jabba Tears Podcast. Um, before we go, no, oh well. Oh, uh, so regardless of anything, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hope to see you next week. Hashtag Black Excellence. Hashtag We're Out. <laughs>